All right, here we go. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> this is day two, the last panel of the day. And we're closing out day two of Justice Con. And this has just been an incredible day. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, there's tons of panels to go look at. Uh, anything from like a cosplay discussion about um, acceptance of cosplay. And and uh, we had uh, artist uh, Gonzalo Gusta, uh, Gustavino, I think. Uh, forgive me if I said your name wrong. Uh, we also had panels with Ray Porter, Ray Fisher, Joe Manganiello, Harry Lennox, of course, uh, Patrick Totopoulos. And then we just got done seeing Zack Snyder as well as script writer Chris Terrio. So and uh, as you guys know, uh, we can you know, this is all for uh, uh, a fundraiser for American Society or American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, AFSP. And, and I don't know what our total is right now, but I know we are over $10,000 already raised up to this point. And so guys, if you would like, uh, if you're able to, whatever you can donate uh, to this good cause, there are links down in uh, beneath the video. You can go in there and uh, you could donate to this good cause and just kind of add to that total. So there's also Justice Con uh, merchandise, which of course you can, you can buy some of the stuff for this convention, which also goes uh, all the proceeds going to AFSP. So guys, I would like to welcome you. Welcome to you, our special guest, Jay Oliva, returning from to Justice Con again from last year. Welcome, Jay. How you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Um, when I found out that there was going to be another one, I, I was like, I hope <laughs> I get invited and I hope I don't follow Zach. And I, I'm following <laughs> Zach, so I hope he'll we'll stick around. <laughs> I was watching Zach's. <laughs> I was going to say, I was watching Zach's uh, panel too. And I was like, I'm so engrossed. And then when Chris Tank came on, I was like, I gotta stick oh. around, and then I'm like, wait, wait, I gotta get ready for the for my panel. So I just I had to bow out a little bit early, but it was it was really cool. I'm yeah. glad that um you know Chris showed up, and I'm glad that that was invited back for for this because it's you know it's good yeah. for a good cause. And you know, I mean, if you think about it, a year ago when uh, we were, did our first Justice Con, you guys yeah. had no clue what the just what Zach's Justice League was like. <laughs> so now that it's out, no, I mean, I know, it feels really it's great that I can finally talk about things that I couldn't talk about before. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing how much things have changed because, I mean, that was that was, uh, you know, pre-film. Right. So now it's like, you know, we are now post Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is just a great feeling. It was such a great film. So. Um, so, Jay, you know, as a little bit of prep work, I, I kind of went through and, and I just wanted to make sure I fully understood all your background. And uh, I mean, you're a filmmaker, you're an artist, obviously, uh, you're actually a professor. You teach some classes. Uh, you've been yes. doing that for about 20 years at a local university. Yeah. And I think. Um, you're also apparently a sport reporter, sports reporter for the Daily yes, Planet. Yes, I am. <laughs> if you watch the film, it's because I was directing my animated films for Warner Brothers that yeah. I couldn't write my piece. And that's why Perry called Clark to cover right. for me because I was too busy making, uh, it was probably a Batman film. That's probably why. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, that's, that's my, it was funny when I saw that. And it's, you know, it's, I didn't notice it until it came on, on video because mm -hmm. I didn't see it. I mean, I didn't, I didn't see my name in the theater. And then when I saw it, I thought I saw somebody put a screen grab. I so thought somebody had just photoshopped it in. And then I was like, wait a minute, let me go check. And sure enough, it was there. And I was like, oh, I was like, I'm in the DC universe as a yes, person. So cool. Yeah. So I, I did. I had no clue. So I have to thank, thank Zach and and uh, whoever snuck me in or is great whose idea that was. But I'm very thankful that I, I am in the DC universe. Uh, those things are great. I mean, we always love those things as fans. We just love all the little Easter eggs that are put in. Um, you've also got your own production company, which, speaking of Easter eggs, is kind of named after a couple of characters I think we'll recognize, uh, Lex and Otis Productions. Can you tell yes. us a little bit about that? Uh, well, it's funny. Like, uh, I was looking for, when I started my own um, studio, I was trying to find, you know, uh, a good name. I was actually trying to find a location. And one, mm -hmm. and I had looked at, like, 12 different spots, and the and they were all, like, not so great. And the last mm -hmm. spot was this really nice place in Glendale in California. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and when the, uh, um, the manager was asking me, what's the name of your studio? I didn't have a name yet, but, uh, it was the, it was on Lexington street. Okay. And she was asking me it right as we were stepping onto the elevator. And I looked down and it said, Otis. And I thought, Oh yeah. yeah Lex and Otis. And again, <laughs> of course, there's a little play on words with the whole Lex Luthor and, and yeah. Otis. But, so I just called it Lex and Otis. I thought it was a really cool, catchy name. So that, no, that's, that's great. It. I mean, we all grew up watching those characters, obviously from you know 1978 and and the subsequent films as well. But um, 
I mean, it's just, it's again, we just kind of love those little things. So I, I, I love the name. You've got like about a hundred different artists and other production staff working for you. Yes, we are currently, we've got quite a few multiple productions. Um, wow. on two productions in particular, I've wrangled Zach in. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, Zach, you want to do anything animated? Yeah. Uh, you know, when I was working with him back in Man of Steel, I had, I'd constantly been pushing him because uh, if you remember on Watchmen, they did that Black Freighter. Um, right. Was, you know, in, in Watchmen, mm-hmm. and I told him, hey, listen, you know, I, you know, I, I work at Warner Brothers, you know, I'm an animation director. Uh, next time you want to do anything animation, just let me know. And then, of course, you know, fast forward, uh, it was about uh, two months before or about a month before Man of Steel comes out. It's about early May. Um, I find out that Zach wanted to do the Superman 75th anniversary. And so I love um, that. Yeah, he reached absolutely, out to the studio and he's like, I want to work with Jay. And I was like, awesome. Let's go make something cool. So then I, <laughs> him and I, and then Bruce Tim, we we came up with that that short, that Superman City Five short. But I storyboarded all of that, like that whole thing. Yeah. And so it was it's pretty cool. But there are uh it, it's pretty funny. There's that the, there's a Muhammad Ali sequence where you mm-hmm. of course we show Muhammad Ali, but that sequence, um, that first shot where it's like a uh a shot of the uh, the boxing ring. Yeah. Bruce Tim actually drew that, so we, Bruce was like, "Cause we 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 had a little bit of time to squeeze that in, and in the and in the very eleventh hour, Bruce was like, you know, we should really put this in here.' And then we we like snuck it in, and it was able, to, and he drew that, so that's actually his drawing that we colored up, if I remember mm. correctly. So it's pretty cool. Oh, that's great. I, I I read that. I have that comic still to this day, and I've read that thing several times. You know, oh, yeah. as a kid, you know, I I love that. So it it was such a great uh, homage to all the Superman through the years and all that, and just the legacy of Superman. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. I wish we had more time. Uh, originally, my, my initial pitch was like something like a four minute long or five minute long montage. And they're like, Jay, you know, we only have like a minute. I'm like a minute. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, close to almost a minute and a half, maybe two minutes at the end. But, oh, that's uh, great. but what can you do? Right. But that's OK. Yeah. Maybe they'll call me back to do the 100th anniversary of Superman. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I, you and I just kind of grew up in a lot of similar ways. You know, we we both uh, obviously I'm like, I think I'm six years older than you. And so uh, very similar age. Uh, but I mean, you talked about like the George Reeves Superman growing up watching that. I did the same thing. I, I ate those things up because at the time, I mean, in terms of like live action, it was just the George Reeves Superman. You had the Batman 66, which, you know, I watched that as well. And so yeah. those were our like live action you know, superheroes. Uh, don't, on TV. Forget, uh, don't forget Electric Company, right? It was uh, right. <laughs> Spider-Man on Electric Company. It was that's the other. true. That is and true. Yeah. And Spider-Man, I used to watch and the Hulk. Yeah. yeah. A lot. Oh, and then of course you talked about the Spider-Man uh, cartoon from early 1980s. Uh, same thing. I was watching that. Uh, just mm-hmm. absolutely love that. Love the super friends. I think you had mentioned that as well. So yeah. it, it's kind of funny. And, you know, of course, you know, a lot of us that kind of grew up like loving these things. I mean, we, we kind of have, you know, this idea of like, boy, I would like to make some of those things, or I'd like to draw that. And so, of course, I got in the drawing and kind of similar uh, path as you as well. And and I remember my parents as well were saying, you know, hey, you know, don't go into art. It doesn't pay, you know, trying to encourage me not to go into art. And and I kind of decided not to. You know, I went into engineering school instead. And I know you went into pre-med, I think. Yeah, I was supposed to be a doctor. I wanted to be a yeah. pediatrician. And then, uh, okay. yeah, <laughs> then I fell into <laughs> this. No, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, but, like, yeah, I was gonna say that, like, you know, I, I think I said this in my last one. The uh, so the, the university I dropped out of, I teach at, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Which, funny enough, laughs> uh, so my mom was always bugging me to get my degree, and uh, yeah, she stopped after I, I started teaching there, so now she just tells everybody I'm a professor, even though I'm like, you do know I do more than that, mom, but she's like, no, he's a professor. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, uh, same thing. You had some of the similar art influences as me as well and all that. So um, it, it's it's funny, but I, I just love the idea of like, you know, how I never pursued that art path. You you did. And just to see like how successful you've been, like, I'm just like, it, it's it's almost like I almost have this like almost like fatherly pride, even though we're, you know, similar <laughs> age and all that. But it's like, it's like, oh, I, you know, this is like what I kind of envisioned that like I would have done. And to, yeah. to see somebody, you know, to to be as successful as you. Uh, it's just amazing. And and I was like looking at it like I at first I thought you were the di- uh, filmmaker that has directed the most DC films. No, and I, no. I, I think you're, I was at I nine. you're probably. Yeah, you're I at, was nine, at nine. But I think you're number two. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm two. I think Sam Lu's probably more than me at this point. But uh, yeah, I Sam Lu's <laughs> at the time I left. I was one away from a box set. So yeah. If the fans demanded they should tell Warner Brothers to have Jay finish his 10th uh, film. Yeah. And then, they could release a box set of the Jay Oliva, whatever. <laughs> and that'd be cool. That's awesome. 
Yeah, give them one more. So, uh, but what's interesting is like you you had talked about how you, your first job was as a storyboard revisionist. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's how you finally got your first job, and that's you kind of like got you into the the storyboard side of it, which of course led to uh, things later on down the road. But what is a storyboard revisionist? I wasn't really exactly sure uh, what that job so is. Storyboard revisionist is basically it's the kind of like entry level of uh, kind of job position for um the path there's two paths in, in animation there's the mm -hmm. design path where you're a designer and you eventually work your way up to character designs or even art director or even production okay. designer and then there is the storyboard path where you start as a revisionist and then you go to director and most of the time you actually go you start a revisionist and then storyboard artist and then director and then uh, a lot of directors end up becoming uh producers or eps mm -hmm. at that point mm -hmm. um but uh, so revisionist, basically what I do is, you know, the storyboard artist turns in the work and the director looks at it, makes notes. And instead of the giving it back to the storyboard artist to fix, because the storyboard artist is now in another episode, um, he gives it to somebody like me. And then okay. I, I, I do all the fixes, you know, and that was when I realized that, um, you know, there were some really great boards and there are some really not so great board artists. <laughs> right. And that's when yeah. I. You know, I inquired about like, so how do you become a board artist, right? Because I just thought right. I was a revisionist for like the rest of my life, you know. But then, you know, lo and behold, they said, no, it's just you just got to be good. So I, I just learned because I remember back then there were no storyboard um, classes. There were right. nothing. So I just had to talk, teach myself. I just looked at storyboards. I read the five seasons of cinematography. Mm -hmm. I went to the library and got any kind of book, books on directing, any, anything. At the time, there were laser discs uh, and you know st stuff where you would have like, yeah. you know, directors talking about how they, you know, did their craft. And I just was like a sponge. I just tried to yeah. learn as much as I could. And then yeah. what was funny, though, is like, you know, so my my training was is very much live action filming, right? Because I, I was reading a lot of books about that, right? Because there weren't there weren't that many animation books about filmmaking. There was a lot of animation mm -hmm. technique, you know, learning about squash and stretch, and you know, a lot of history of like the, you know the uh, um, the original animators from Disney and whatnot. But there weren't any about actual filmmaking, right? Like the actual like language of film, and uh, and so I had to kind of teach myself, you know, along the way, and and try to kind of de decode it and it's funny like i said that because i was doing a lot of live action i, mean, I studied live action <laughs> i would go and there and then i would be like oh here's you know here's winnie the pooh go do winnie the pooh and i'm just like okay wait how does this but i mean it was great because you know my most of my career i've been doing action adventure stuff so yeah. my my kind of thinking of the the shots is more like a live action film right and and that's why i think when i was starting to work with zach on the live action stuff I didn't feel like I was, you know, I was worried at one bit, you know, I was more, I was more worried that he wouldn't like me. Uh, but I knew that my work at that point was pretty solid and that I could do, you know, do whatever he wanted. You know, it was great just trying to understand like his, his filmmaking style and all the directors, whenever I work with a director, I always tell them like, listen, I'm a director too, uh, mm -hmm. but this is your film. So I'm going to ask a lot of questions, but I'll give you all the coverage. I'll give you all the mm -hmm. reaction shots and all mm -hmm. these different things uh, that I think you'll need. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and also I'll let you know like hey there's there's some things that I think you need to adjust in the script because maybe this doesn't quite make sense right so right. I think it's good I think most directors like like having an extra pair of eyes just to kind of be like hey what about or you know to also bounce ideas off of I know that's one thing that Zach really likes to do with me is he bounces a lot of ideas like he'll he'll come up he'll come up with something and he'll be like what do you think about that is that cool and I'll be like yeah it's cool but what about this <laughs> and it's great I mean to his credit like he. Uh, you know, if, if I pitch in something that sounds really good, that he he he'll, he'll use it. Yeah. Like you'll see it in the films, which is cool. Yeah, I mean, everything I've always heard about Zach, you know, whenever everybody, everybody talks about him, it's like how collaborative he is, and uh, and I think that's what's great. I mean, that's why so many people just love him because I mean, you know, he goes by the philosophy that like you know, I'm not always going to have the best ideas, right? I've got this big team here, and let's put all of our heads together and just come up with something that's just badass. And and uh, and I think that's how you know he's so successful you know as a filmmaker is because he he values his team and he he you know he he listens and talks through things and oh, yeah. and uh, yeah so that's, Plus, that's really cool uh, I was going to say that like um you know I've worked with a lot of directors um a lot of filmmakers but I have to say that Zach is one of the few guys that like knows a lot in a sense <laughs> that like like I don't know my I don't know my lenses very well um mm -hmm. But like, it's funny, like Zach will just start, start talking about a sequence and he'll describe a sequence and he'll be like, okay, so we'll do a 50 and we're going to push in and then I want to do this and that. And I'm just like, okay, 
And then in my head, I'm like, how am I going to draw that? Okay. I think I can figure this out. <laughs> but, uh, but he, I mean, he, he knows this stuff and it's great because he, uh, there wasn't any time that like Zach was like, I don't know what to do. Like normally he already has an idea of what he wants, mm -hmm. which is great because you know, the worst thing as, as an artist and I, even as uh, you know, working on these films is when a director tells you, I'll know it when I see it. Mm -hmm. Cause then you just, I just, just want to shoot yourself. Cause you're like, I can be spinning my wheels doing a million different things. Just give me some direction. Right. Even feel like, yeah, yeah, it's like, just give me some tones. Like, you know, that might, might be like, can I, can we do, you know, driving Miss Daisy with a little bit of Terminator two ending. Okay, cool. I know kind of this gives me some direction as opposed to it can be anything. Right. So, yeah, like I said, you know, to Zach's credit, like he always has an initial starting idea. And then uh, usually as we talk it through, it'll, it'll evolve into what you'll eventually see. And a lot of times it's back and forth and I'll be like, okay, that's cool. What about this? Or, or, or he'll like something about my idea and say, but what about this? And it's almost like, you know, when you're little kids and you're just kind of like, you know, it's one upping or trying to figure out like what you're doing with, with your action figures. And, and right, to me, right. that, that's the fun part of, you know, collaborating with somebody like Zach. Yeah. That's awesome. So, I mean, you, you actually, you know, you went and moved on from storyboarding and you got your first gig at directing an animated feature. And that was basically because you kind of got the eye of Bruce Tim, didn't you? Uh, no. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So oddly enough, so funny thing is um, the first thing that I directed was a TV series called Roughnecks of Starship Trooper Chronicles. Right. right? Yeah. Um, and I was mostly a battlefield promotion. Uh, one of the directors had moved on to, um, to one of the other, um, uh, other shows and and they needed somebody to fill in his spot and you know i i had kind of like stepped they were like hey jay you do good work why don't you step in so i said okay cool awesome right and that was for a cg show so there were a lot of things that you couldn't do like picking things up like we had to do a thing like you know if we were going to pick this up you have to put your hand like this and then you have to cut and then now it's attached to this model and it, it moves wow. around you know so uh so that i had to learn kind of on 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 a kind of like that kind of show but it, what was funny, that was like in about 98, 99. And around, when I finished that, I was like, hey, I feel pretty good. I was 21 when I was direct, I started directing. Yeah. So I think I was a pretty young director at that point. Um, I would think and, so. Uh, and so I, I, I did, a, I, I, I applied to Warner Brothers. And, and so I, I was thinking, oh, I want to work on, you know, with Bruce Tim and do all the, you know, Warner Brothers stuff. And then so like I, uh, I applied and I waited. And I waited and I waited and it was like a month later, they give me a call and they said, Hey, can you pick up your portfolio? And I was like, oh, okay. So I go there and I open it up and it looked, didn't look like anybody looked at it. And, you know, at the time I did, I was very naive about how the process was and mm -hmm. I don't think Bruce even saw it. So, but anyways, my, my, my dreams of working with Bruce Tim was just trounced. Cause I was like, Oh, they must've looked at it and thought it looked very, you know, mm -hmm. not good. And, and, but apparently nobody saw it because again, at the time, like, you know, we're so busy when we're working on these productions, like we don't have time to look at every portfolio that comes, that gets submitted. Right. But my dreams of working at Warner Bros. is basically like trounced at that point. And so <laughs> I ended up going to, I did He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. I was a director on that, that reboot, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Productions. And then, um, and then I got a call a little bit after that saying, Hey, you want to work on Batman? I was like, Oh, cool. I get to work on Batman. And they're like, Oh, but it's not the Bruce Tins Batman. It's the Batman. So I was like, okay. yeah, you know. It's Batman. I'll do it. I'll take it. So I worked on that. And it wasn't until a little bit later that my buddy Joaquin Dos Santos, uh, he was directing on Justice League Unlimited. And he's like, hey, Jay, you know, I've got an episode that I need some freelance for. And I was like, oh, oh, let, me, <laughs> let me jump on it. And uh, I did one. I did that episode, I think. I'm not quite sure which which one it was, but it might have been the Flash Appreciation Day, which is funny if you think about it, because mm -hmm. I ended up doing a lot of Flash stuff. Mm -hmm. But did that and then apparently bruce won't he has to approve you to work on his show so he uh, so thank god he must have looked at my stuff and liked it and maybe joaquin like gave a good word for me but mm -hmm. um but they called me to do another one so i ended up doing i didn't do that many justice league unlimited i did maybe three maybe four if i remember correctly um okay. but i got to work on jlu right those are my first right bruce. and then shortly after that um i believe that was when Marvel Lionsgate called me and said, "Hey, can you um, can you work on these on these uh, films, the direct -to video films for Lionsgate?" So mm -hmm. I did Iron Man mm -hmm. and uh, Doctor Strange, for example. Anyways, uh, I uh, at it was around that time that I got called by Warner Brothers and said, "Hey, we're starting to do our own direct -to videos, and we're starting with Superman Doomsday," mm -hmm. and they're like, "Do you mm -hmm. want to work on this?" And I was like, "Awesome!" Right. So I I then did a. Uh, uh, 
no, I went in and I and I did and I so I worked on the first DTV, which was Superman Doomsday, and I worked on pretty much every single one until I was in house there. My first in house gig when I was there was Superman, Batman, Public Enemies. I think that was the first one. Okay. So I and you were that. working as a storyboard artist. Yeah, I was. I was just time, yeah. I was, I was splitting my duties because I was directing for the Marvel on the Marvel mm-hmm. lines and stuff, but I was doing um I was doing I was like you know, doing freelance for, for, you know, for Warner brothers at the same time. I like to say, I don't, I don't say no to things. So (laughs) (laughs) that's a cool project. Let me work on that. (laughs) Yeah. I think your IMDB uh, credit list would be proof of that proof of that because at last I checked, it's like over a hundred, I think (laughs) credits that you have on your page. Yeah. I think I'm close to that. There's a lot, there's also a lot of stuff that's on there. That's not, um, that I'm not credited on, or I just didn't put on Yeah, I worked yeah. on a lot. I used to just work, you know, if you notice my career, there'll be like one, maybe two, but then it ends up becoming like six, seven, or even eight a year because I just end up doing right. a lot of events. Yeah. Yeah, it's always a grind in, in your industry, right? <laughs> always looking for the new job. Uh, so when you, um, so when I when I was mentioning that you got uh, Bruce Tim's attention, you actually got your first opportunity to actually direct a DCAU film. Can you tell us about that one? Uh, yeah, that was, well, I did, um, I did Gotham, um, I'm sorry, I did, uh, Emerald Knights. So the Green mm-hmm. Lantern Emerald Knights, that was the first one. That was a co-directing one where I did, uh, the Green Lantern. I think I did the mm-hmm. Mogo one and the Lyra right. one that I did. And yeah. then I ended up doing, um, and then after that, that's when they called me and I was doing Young Justice at the time. And they said, uh, Hey, you know, uh, would you like to do Dark Knight Returns? Frank Miller's Frank Miller, Frank Dark Knight Returns. I was like, I'd love to. <laughs> so then um, I ended up, uh, so yeah, so I remember driving home and just be like, like I was like pinching myself because I was like, this is a dream come true. I got to do it. <laughs> Out of all the ones, that's my first kind of one that I did was that two part of Frank of uh, Dark Knight Returns 1 and 2. Oh, that's awesome. Because that was, because I think Lauren was moving on to something else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Lauren was, uh, I think she had already given her notice to leave to go to, it was either Avatar or Legend of Korra, I remember. Mm, and, yeah. And, and I mean, thank God for Lauren, because she, I, I believe when she told them, they're like, well, who's going to replace you? And I, 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 I would, I think she, you know, she said, well, what about Jay? And then Bruce had already liked my stuff at the time, because I had already done, um, I had done at that point Under the Red Hood with him. I had mm-hmm. done, I did that big fight sequence there. I did the Crisis on Two Earths, that big fight sequence at the mm-hmm. end. Oh, the, yeah. With uh, the the bad guys, you know, the, with the evil, the evil Justice League with the versus the mm-hmm. Justice, League. and and then I was doing um shoot, there was one more uh Apocalypse. Yeah, I was doing yeah. the Fear fight for Apocalypse. I was doing all of those. All of those were crazy because they were all like overlapping each other. So I was doing all all three of those fight sequences all at the same time. Uh, yeah. So um so yeah, so when they asked me, they they pulled me into the room. They told me, and I was just like, of course, are you kidding me? <laughs> and then uh, and then yeah, and then that was um. And I believe that was when Bruce was going to take a, a little bit of a break. And then that was when I, I did Flashpoint with yeah. uh, Tucker and he took over for, for Bruce. Oh, that's awesome. So when you talk about uh, being a director for an animated feature, can you explain kind of like what a director does uh, in the animated world versus, you know, the live action? It, it's very similar. It's, <laughs> it's very mm-hmm. similar in a lot of ways. Um, you, you know, in live action, the director, it, like everything's kind of like, pivoted off of the director mm-hmm. and and animation it, it is and it isn't uh, a lot of times the executive producer like bruce tim or james tucker will handle a lot of the kind of uh maybe creative side so, cre- some of the creative choices ahead of time uh mm-hmm. before the director gets involved um but i still you know i i hire my crew i you know i i have input into the you know who's the casting uh, a lot of times the direct uh, the ep will usually do a big Kind of like round table where we you know we're with marketing or with the eps the directors mm-hmm. and we talk about like who we'd like for each different parts so we'll, we'll have a, a first second or third like who do we prefer mm. uh, and then you know i i hand out the storyboard um you know i work with the storyboard artists directly i work with the designers i work with the colorists you know i work with you know uh Pretty much my hand is in everything. <laughs> uh, very very similar to what you know like somebody like zach on a, on a live action film um mm-hmm. So it's 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 a lot of the a lot of the kind of skill sets it's pretty much the same except mm-hmm. you know what I have to do also is you know I got to get my hands dirty in a sense that like I'll I'll probably have to storyboard my own sequences or you know a lot of times I'm making the fixes you know where I'll get a, okay. a, a back from a board artist and then I'll 
I have to sit down and make the fixes and, and sit down, you know, with, I have to sit down with the, with the board artists um, and, and kind of walk them through it. And then I'm also there at the, at the voice records as well. Okay. And then you're able to make decisions about the script. If you want to rework something, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I'm kind of notorious with because a lot of my <laughs> script, if you read the original script to what you see on screen, there's a big difference. Uh, there's a <laughs> yeah. very big difference. Um, but I mean, it, it's not that it's at the writer's fault. It's usually, mm -hmm. you know, when I read a script, I usually try to feel it out and kind of feel like what it's missing or what it needs, whether it's, you know, uh, that needs a bigger fight sequence here or mm -hmm. just more pauses. Cause I'm thinking of, of a, of a, of a script kind of like a roller coaster. you like, there's ups and downs to, uh, to how the, the scene plays out. So I want to, um, I want to kind of plan it out. And, and in order to do so though, I might have to move some scenes around or cut scenes out. And kind of elaborate. Mm -hmm. I did that a lot, like on flashpoint on my flashpoint film, mm -hmm. we, we did, I did a big overhaul of that, that whole ending. Um, and also we moved some sequences around and, and changed a few things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very cool. So then uh, let's kind of transition over when you get your first opportunity to work in some live action. Uh, I, I think at the time you were doing something with Tim Miller, I think uh, over in the video game side. Yeah, I was, I was doing some freelance uh, again, it's freelance. Right. So for those of you who want to get, do what I do, like do some freelance, right? Like don't stay at a studio just and do studio work, like do some freelance. Cause you never know how, yeah. you know, who, might get connections with so i had been doing some freelance for tim on some those kind of like you know e3 cinematic trailers mm. and um i had done maybe two or three with them with blur at that point and then he gives me a call and he says hey you know i got a call from Zack snyder's office and they're looking for a board artist to work on a on a movie that i can't tell you about but i'm sure you can <laughs> guess and of course we all knew at the time that zach was working on a superman film and he's mm -hmm. like are you, is it cool if I give him your, your reference number? And I was like, are you kidding me, Tim? I was like, give him my, your, my number, right? And I was just like, you know, I was just like a giddy schoolgirl. Um, yeah. It was I mean, because you at this time, you had seen Watchmen and 300. Yeah, and of yeah. course. <laughs> I mean, every single, you know, Zack Snyder film at that point. Yeah. And, um, and so, uh, you know, I, I, I told him, yeah, go ahead. I didn't, I didn't want to obsess over it. I just was like, okay, cool if they call, cool if they don't, you know, because that, yeah. that happens a lot, right? Sometimes, it's your industry. Like, yeah. hey, you know, uh, we're thinking about you for this one film. You're like, cool. And then you never hear from anybody, right? right? So, so anyways, I get a call the following week from his assistant says, hey, you know, Zach wants to meet you. So, okay. And I think I told this story in the last Justice Con, but that was how I met Zach. So I met yeah. up with him and then he, he like, I, I, again, I get my jobs with Zach because Zach is busy. Because if, <laughs> if if Zach had a lot of time, he'd storyboard his whole films himself. Right. So I'm always hoping with every time Zach, like you know, I I, I hear that he's on a film, I'm always like, I hope he's busy. Because if he's busy, <laughs> then it means I get a job, right? I get right. a call. Uh, but but yeah, so that was that was when uh, you know I first met Zach and we started we started working and and you know thank God you know he liked working with me because he called me back for every film afterwards. Yeah, I mean, because it was Man of Steel, right? And so, uh, it, it, did he have any storyboards for anything at that point, or were you kind of brought in just to kind of fill in some of the gaps? I know Zach had storyboarded all. Yeah, at the time that I came in, he had storyboarded the okay. um, opening, so he did all of the Krypton stuff. So I, I didn't have, I didn't even touch Krypton. Um, okay. I did all of the Smallville stuff, and then all of the ending, which was funny because I was expecting Zach to take some of the action sequences, but he ended up just saving the kind of like the you know talking to the army or these kind of like you know very you know calm mm -hmm. talking blocking sequences he was mm -hmm. like i'm gonna storyboard this here you go jay here's zod fighting uh, here's superman fighting you know in smallville and you know and then oh here's you know the ending fight or whatever uh so uh it was it was fun because I, I was yeah. you know it just showed that he trusted me with with these really big sequences and you know and that's why i wanted to like you know knock it out of the park for him because i was like you know sure. what a great opportunity i'm and i even told myself i was like i'm going to do something that i couldn't do in animation because you know in animation we could kind of do everything but there's a limit to what we can and can't do um you know because you know just because of budget and time mm -hmm. uh, just to give you an example like so when i'm doing these animated uh kind of do the director videos i only really have about three months to get the whole thing done like storyboarded and, and right. done. Um, which means, you know, for a certain, you know, fight sequence, I might only have a week or two to figure out the choreography. And then, yeah. you know, maybe I'll have another week or two or three weeks to clean it up and draw it. So yeah. I don't really have a lot of time to really just kind of think and stew and kind of really yeah. rework the sequence. But on the feature films, there's a little bit longer time, you know, so there was, uh, you know, and also 
what I come up with, they're not going to be shooting for, you know, three, four, five months later. So there's a lot of time for refinement. Sure. So I was able to kind of really kind of do, you know, really give it the time that I needed to kind of work out those, you know, the, the fight sequences, especially um, like the Smallville one was one of the first ones that I tackled, which was, um, which was cool because they had, they had, um, they had shots from the set of the street that they were going to shoot on um, mm. in Chicago. And, uh, and then of course I actually ended up going out there. Cause I remember I was, yeah. I was, I was drawing at, at Zach's, uh, at Zach's house and we were going over some storyboards and he's like, so he's like, so you're gonna have to come out, you know, he's like, we're going to be moving out to Chicago, uh, you know, our production. So you might have to come out for like a week or two. And I was like, okay, a week or two is fine. And then I get a call from his production manager. It's like, okay, so we have you scheduled here for three months, <laughs> and I'm like, three months. <laughs> And you were uh, directing Dark Knight Returns yeah, at the time. I was, doing yeah. Dark, I was, I was yeah. we were right in the middle. We had just finished Dark Knight Returns Part One. We were yeah. doing Dark Knight Returns Part Two, and you know, I mean, thank God Warner Brothers Animation. Like, I went to them. I said, "Hey guys, I have this opportunity to do this, but uh, you know, I'm right in the middle of doing Dark Knight Returns too, and I don't want to leave it. You know, what can we do? I mean, I think I could, I can direct from over there. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, and so, I mean." thank god to their credit they they trusted me enough to like okay let's see if we can make it work and you know i was able to make it work in fact i was actually more efficient there than i was here because over there the three hour difference i was awake early so i was oh. you know constantly like you know messaging my crew earlier in the morning and they're like what are you doing up jay this is so early uh but it was good and also i was able to focus because i was you know uh, i was drawing i was drawing um the men of steel stuff during the day and and a little time at the night i would basically review storyboards um mm -hmm. you know for the dark knight returns it just kind of because i'm managing it i'm really just yeah. managing it at that point um so it, it worked out it worked out and it was it was, a, it was a really fun experience that was the first time i was ever really like on set on location that wasn't yeah. just you know where i was staying at, you know pretty far from home yeah no that's awesome so you know then you moved on from that uh you did you start working on Batman v Superman at that point, but I think you were, and with that one, you were actually called in just for a few scenes, right? Uh, no, 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 it's quite the opposite. So, um, so Man of Steel, I was there for about three months. Um, and then, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Zach called me and, uh, Zach's people called me and said, Hey, Zach, well, you know, we're starting a new movie, you know, it's a sequel to Man of Steel, you know, are you available? And I said, of course. <laughs> and they're like, well, how flew, how soon can you fly out? I'm like, I can fly out anytime. And, <laughs> I so I, I think this was it was fairly it's always short notice and that's the thing with these yeah. when you film these films it's always short notice so you have to just kind of drop everything you have to just be available you have to just be very flexible to work mm -hmm. on these things, right um, because I knew that if I had if I had you know told them that I was busy or I couldn't do it that they would just go to somebody else and that person might be end up doing you know might be sitting here <laughs> talking to you guys about you know working <laughs> back on Justice League right yeah so. I um they gave me a call. I, it must have been in November or or late October because um I flew out right after Thanksgiving. It was like um mm -hmm. was, I remember I flew out Thanksgiving uh, right after Thanksgiving um, during the, that holiday weekend mm -hmm. and I landed I landed in Detroit um and the next day it snowed like 6 feet of snow and it never yeah. stopped snowing and, uh, <laughs> and 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 in fact that was actually one of the longest production um, longest shows i was on because i was there from pretty much thanksgiving um all the way till about june oh about so eight months wow. long. yeah but we, we were supposed to start shooting bvs in the winter time so B bvs was supposed to be you know it was supposed to have that kind of batman begins feel to where yeah. i'm not not batman begins or batman no no which was the one the uh, batman returns sorry the the tim burton that right. kind of like uh, Batman in snow, which I love. I mean, that's yeah. always one. Of, if you watch my films, I always have Batman in the snow or in the rain. I like yeah. to put it in like environments. So we were supposed to shoot in Detroit, um, and there was supposed to be snow. Like we were going to have that kind of nice mm -hmm. texture. But unfortunately, that year the polar vort vortex hit, <laughs> and <laughs> and we couldn't shoot anything. And uh, and so we had to uh, delay shooting until pretty much May June, and then. But but it gave it it gave us a lot of time to kind of really rework the sequences and mm -hmm. uh, you know um, figure things out, which was good. I mean, the more time always always helps, you know. Yeah, oh, that's great. Uh, so then uh, at that point, you actually started working on uh, Wonder Woman as well. With uh, I think you started with McLaren originally. Yeah, yeah. How Michelle. did you get that opportunity? Uh, uh, I think uh, I think it's because of Zach. Um, I think Zach gave me a a, a good. You know, recommendation and then they gave me a call and then and uh 
and I met up with Michelle um, and she had talked me through her version of Wonder Woman. And I thought it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and I was working on it, you know, for, for, I would say about two to three weeks. And then, and then I saw the news hit that she had, you know, basically stepped away Creative from the differences. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I texted her. I was like, is that true? And then, she, <laughs> and then she gave me a call. She's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then she's like, well, and she's like, and, and so she's like, well, I'm sure they're going to get somebody to replace me. And, and, you know, and uh, maybe the work that we've done, you can still kind of reuse or see what the yeah. new director is. And then uh, shortly thereafter, that was when Patty um, yeah. was, uh, was given the job. And then I started working with Patty probably a couple of weeks after she, they had announced her working on okay. it. And, and the sequence I was that they handed me first was the um, the Themyscira uh, yeah. beach battle. So that oh, that one was barely that. it was just like there's a beach battle, Germans <laughs> and Amazons go. So which uh, I've got some I, I want to share something on that. So I've got some of your uh, let me you can go ahead and keep talking while I figure this out. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, so I so I remember um, that was. Patty had given me some beats of what she wanted. Like she wanted them to jump off the cliff. They yeah. had, luckily they had, they had um, location scouted. So I had pictures of that beach that they were going to shoot in. So I basically just did, uh, I just did my version of Saving Private Ryan. Like that, that, you know, the beach landing on Normandy. I just did it with, you know, World War One Germans being attacked <laughs> by, you know, Amazons. And it was fun. I mean, it was, from what I, from what I heard, it was one of the last things they shot uh, um, for the movie um mm -hmm. and it turned out great it's one of my favorite ones yeah so this is so this is when um the amazons lead the charge so at this point in the story uh the germans are kind of leading um are kind of it's kind of it's a seesaw battle back and forth when the amazons show up they they kind of push it in their favor but then mm -hmm. I, I ended up having a beat in here that that that, that um that wasn't in the movie where they ended up taking out a machine gun and they mounted mm -hmm. it on, on the boat and they were and the machine gun kind of like started Kind of like turning the tide and then the uh the amazons uh showed up on cavalry and the cavalry and basically i was doing the uh riders of rohan rohirrim you know cavalry charge from lord of the rings where they're just running over germans and they're throwing mm -hmm. spears shooting arrows <laughs> uh, so yeah and then like you know when they finally when i finally saw the final film i was like oh that was so cool it was a lot oh, better than I, it. I love that sequence i think you knocked it out of the park Thank you. Thank you. Then we, then we got this one. This is another favorite. Yeah. Was this, was this your idea to come swinging down on the ropes? Uh, well, uh, what, what it was, uh, Patty had mentioned that she wanted to do this thing where they jumped off this cliff and shot a rope and then swung down. Swung down. And yeah. I was thinking, how do I make that work? <laughs> uh, but, you know, I just started thinking a bit more. And so I took that idea and then I just kind of ran with it. And it, that's what you see on the film, which is this idea. And it was also one of those things where, you, we were supposed to make more of a meal of the death of these Amazons. Remember, these Amazons basically have been living for a very long time and they haven't died. So mm -hmm. there, there was supposed to be a scene where Diana first sees an Amazon getting shot. And remember, this is the first time Amazons, yeah. you know, firearms. So it was supposed to be a kind of a big moment, but it, it gets a little lost in, in this fight. But the fight ended up turning great. But but yeah, so this yeah. is what kind of concepts. So this yeah, this is, is this is another great scene. Yeah. So yeah. So if you if you watch the Themyscira sequence, I did the, I, my sequence started with her on the um, on the cliff, uh, looking out over the ocean, and then that's when she sees Steve Trevor. It's this one. But yeah, come over, and then she dives off the um, the the cliff, mm -hmm. and then she swims out there, and then we go to go to Steve, and he's sinking in the uh, in the plane. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I did all of that all of that sequence. Yeah, like her coming yeah. in there. And saving him, yeah. So and then at the beach, her looking yeah. down at Steve. Yeah, that's just my Little Mermaid shot. That's I just, <laughs> I just I, you know stole that from Little Mermaid. I'm like, yeah, it works. It's a good <laughs> shot. So <laughs> uh, these are great. I love these. Yeah. Is this uh, No Man's Land here? Uh, no, no, no. So what happened was I I had only done the I did the Themyscira um, beach battle, and that was all that was all that Patty needed from me. So I was like, okay, it was it was about a three maybe four months I was on it. And then, um, and this is this actually leads into the Justice League uh, talk. So I was in London working with Zach for some additional stuff that they were uh, that he needed help on for Justice League. And mm -hmm. then he, um, uh, and then I went back to LA, and I was working. I was getting ready to go to uh, back back to London for Rick Famuyiwa's Flash because um, uh, they were they were going to be shooting, and uh, they said, well. You know, hold off on that. Um, we need you to help out on Patty on some reshoots. 
on Wonder Woman. So I was like, okay. So then, you know, I met up with Patty again and, and, and Jeff Johns and Patty showed me a cut of Wonder Woman, an early cut. And, and we watched it. Uh, I watched the ending. I, I didn't see the whole thing. I just, oh, wait, did I see the whole thing? Maybe I did see the whole thing. Yeah. And it was mostly the ending that we were focusing on. And so they were like, well, you know, um, we have some ideas that in order to kind of punch up the ending, you know, what you have any suggestions. And so we had come up with some ideas. So I, I had thrown in, so they brought me in to kind of like punch up some of the fight sequences at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, early on, David Thewlis wasn't turning into Ares. Like he was mm -hmm. just, just him. So um, they wanted him to actually turn into Ares, the god of war, during the fight. So okay, sense of like where the bomb explodes and he burns, yeah. and he turns into that. So <laughs> and then this was, I believe, this is a sequence where um, this is when she's supposed to be running towards Ares, and all the German soldiers are shooting at her, and she's blocking. I gotcha. Him, and all these German soldiers kind of get in her way. I think this was that sequence. Okay, so that that was what they brought you in, and at that point to uh, rework that ending scene. Okay. Yeah, so I just punch up stuff. It's yeah. Just a punch up. Okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, and then you mentioned Justice League. Uh, now, at that point in time, you did not storyboard Justice League, right? You. No, this is where I was a little sad because I finished <laughs> BVS with Zach, and yeah. then, um, and I believe Zach probably went right into storyboarding Justice League around the time he was still working on BVS, uh, maybe post, because he had. Just they pretty much all storyboarded out. Uh, <laughs> so when when they, I got the call, like I said, it was one of those things where I'm I'm thankful because it usually means that Zach's super busy and can't get mm -hmm. to it. So they called me in to do. Um, they needed. Uh, there's some new additional sequences. So the the scene of Steppenwolf landing and um, and then fighting the Amazons and then that whole where that whole gigantic thing falls into the ocean. Uh, I did all that sequence. They had already, they had done some, they already had some, done some previous, some early stuff of the, the battle. I mean, the, uh, the kind of the hot potato of, of throwing the, yeah. the broth. They had, they had done some previews of that. So I took some of that and then I added a bunch of stuff uh, just to kind of rework it and, 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 and address a lot of the notes that Zach had had for it, as well as at the studio notes. Um, and, and that's what you see in the, the Justice League, in Zach's Justice League, is that's pretty much what I worked on. Whereas when I saw Whedon's one, a lot of it was cut out. All right. Um, so that's why I like when I so I worked on that. And then um, the other sequence I worked on, I must have done some other stuff in between. I don't remember, but the other big sequence I did was, yeah, I did the mother box. So I did. So so the Batman Batman fighting all of the parademons outside, I didn't get to do. They, they had mm -hmm. already. Um, Damon Caro and his stunt team had already prevised a lot of that out. They needed uh, basically what it would look like once they got inside, and what would that look like. So mm -hmm. um, I, so I it was it was one of those things where there was no time. So what I did is I did some I did some quick sketches uh, of it was basically where you had it was it was Wonder Woman, uh, Aquaman, and. Uh, and cyborg on the bridge and steppenwolf is like in front of them and then of course mm -hmm. the mother box behind them. yeah and it's a big battle where basically they're all trying to get to the mother box and steppenwolf is fighting them all at once so and then it ends with with wonder woman you know she smashes the bridge and they all collapse and so um i did all that stuff so basically i did the from from when they first you know run you know see steppenwolf when he steps away from the the mother box and kind of fights them i did the fight below i did the whole when superman shows up i did the whole like yeah, this is when he was he did the heat vision thing, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I did the um, yeah basically all, a lot of the insights, and then also the uh, uh, when the boom tube opens up and you see Desaad, I mean mm -hmm. Desaad and the uh, and Dark Side. I didn't have Granny in there. That was that was something that Zach added, but it was mm -hmm. cool. Like, in it. Um, but yeah, so I did all that. So it was great to do the Superman, you know, showing up, coming back, and then I was just you know trying to figure out game. Okay, how do I top what we had done before? And we <laughs> yeah. Some Stuff. you know we we did they wanted to do the the the, the, the freeze breath so mm -hmm. we, we did that and then uh we wanted to really show that he you know at this point he's he's more powerful than he was you know prior to to him you know dying yeah well that's awesome yeah i mean i, I absolutely love that sequence i i that was it was so nice to kind of see it all restored with with zach's uh you know zach's cut of this um, did you do the uh, did you do the scene or storyboard the scene uh, where it actually decapitates Steppenwolf? Um, let me think. Um, I just take credit for it, Jay. I think I, yeah, I like to say yes, but I probably not. I think Zach had 
really, I don't remember because here's the cool thing about about that process, which was a little different, was that we didn't have a lot of time because you know Zach was you know had this crazy shooting schedule and he was shooting so many um, setups per day, and so I didn't really get a lot of time with him as much as I normally do, but. He was like, hey, you know, here's the stunt coordinators. Go work with the stunt coordinators and work something out. So I actually, it was really kind of fun. I was working with the stunt coordinators and the VFX previs team there. And we were basically just kind of walking through what could happen and throwing a fight and doing this kind of stuff and then seeing them kind of audition it. Um, and I, was, I wasn't really drawing as much. I was just doing really quick kind of like... Um, like shots that I can give to the VFX team for them to kind of map block it out with the stunt coordinators kind of overseeing it and having that in mind. So it was really interesting because it was one of those jobs where for me, it was, it was easy because I didn't have to draw it all out, but it was, but at the same time it was fun because I was collaborating and talking with the stunt guys and kind of walking them through and understanding how they do it. Cause remember normally when I do my fight choreography, mm -hmm. do you know who's doing it? it's me. <laughs> so I don't have anybody to play it off of. So I'm just like, Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh man, I got to draw this all. And then I got to like figure out, I got to draw the drawings and work it all out. Whereas like, you know, with this it was a little bit more freer because I could just come up with something cool and then let them kind of worry about all the different like punches and blocks and all the kind of things that I would normally have to do in my animated stuff. And so it was this nice kind of like uh, collaboration to kind of, you know, get that mm -hmm. done. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, I mean, you, you, at that same time, you were actually working on Ben Affleck's The Batman, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. So that was one of those things where, um, I got, I got a call, uh, from Zach's people that pretty much driving home from Ben's house. Cause I had met up with Ben and him and I had talked about the sequence that I was doing. I was doing the end sequence of, of his movie and we were just kind of talking and I was driving home and then I got a call from uh, Zach's production manager and they're like, so Zach needs you in London. Uh, can you come out? And I'm like, okay. And this is a Friday. Like, mm -hmm. so he's like, when can you come out? I'm like, well, when do you guys need me? He's like, how about tomorrow? And I'm like, uh, okay. Okay. And then, <laughs> and then called me later and they said, okay, well, we we couldn't get you out till Monday, so come Monday. So then I just said okay. So I packed my bags and I flew out there. Like <laughs> again, you, yeah, you don't want to be the you don't want to turn it down because then of what you might yeah. miss out on. Exactly. <laughs> but it was good because you know Ben was on his way back to back to London to you know of course to continue shooting. So what I would do is uh, in between takes. I would show Ben storyboards from his Batman movie, which was very surreal because Ben, you know, Ben's in his Batman outfit, you know, he falls off and yeah. I'm showing him storyboards about the Batman movie and he's looking at it and, you know, he, like the back of his suit is open. They're, they're pumping in like air conditioning, like just to air it out. Cause I mean, it's really mm, hot right. and he's looking at it and I'm just like, this is so surreal. It's like, it's Batman looking at Batman boards. Like how cool is that? <laughs> So were, were you working from uh, Ben and and at the time it was Ben and Jeff Johns were writing it. Were you working off of their script or was this after Chris Terrio had started to take? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know which draft uh, Chris was in. I, I mean, I would say because I mean the, the the draft that I was working on was 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 pretty solid. I liked it. I thought it was it was it was a really good script. Um, but I know they had changed it a couple times after I ended up. Okay. Uh, stop working on it because I remember prior to that though, because so the very first thing I was working with was um, I was working with uh, Rick Famuyiwa on Flash. Mm -hmm. So right. and I remember this very, very, very clearly. I was working on the Flash like probably in May and June uh, in the summertime. I was working with Rick, and then um, and then Zach and them gave me. A, uh, well, then I got attached to work with 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 Ben probably in about in like August, like early August, late July. Mm -hmm. and that was also the same time Zach called me to come to London. So I was working in all three. <laughs> so I was, I remember <laughs> I was zooming with Rick. I was, I was zooming with Rick from Zach's, um, from Zach's uh, um, trailer uh, on set about flash and then and then i i think rick would talk to zach about some questions about he had about how to hook up to you know uh like the iris stuff that was that was in, sure. in justice so it's really interesting it was like we were collaborating all all three of the filmmakers you know rick ben and zach were all kind of it was just kind of like talking to each other all constantly trying to work out you know how to hook up to each other's movies so it was, it was really interesting and then i was yeah. the conduit i was doing all of them because i was working on all three <laughs> of those films that's and awesome before Rick got it, I worked with Seth Graham Green on. Um, I worked with Seth on the original uh, yeah. like Flash movie before he ended up leaving. 
so so that was, mm. it was that was fun because i did i think he did a, a test he shot a test and i did the boards for that and he was cool he was really cool so i yeah. was i was really excited to work on that and then uh and then like i said working with rick was great rick was a really great director yeah uh, that's great. I mean, so at the time, I mean, as fans, we kind of sit back and we wonder just like how much all these films were supposed to be connected. You know, of course, we know Zach had his plan, you know, to do a, like a five arc film. But there was also like from the original announcement that there was going to be a future Flash film and there was going to be a cyborg film and all that. And so we just didn't really know, um, you know, how well planned out were all these things, you know, how how much connection was it really kind of thought out ahead of time. And, you know, we and we heard from uh, Joe Manganiello earlier that, you know, like his scene um with um you know with uh with lex luther you know that was all planned out to lead into the batman solo film and uh so, which is which is really kind of cool Did, were you there for that that little costume test no i wish i was uh, no <laughs> i wasn't unfortunately but yeah. um yeah when i when i again when i when i read the the first draft of ben's batman i was like this is cool this is really yeah. really cool and you know of, of course at the time i think they had already announced joe as that stroke so right i was pretty jazzed about that and i was like oh i can't wait to <laughs> to do these sequences and you know yeah maybe someday they'll do it i don't know i mean i think it would be cool yeah yeah i think i mean i think everyone in the fan community would love to see it i think it just yeah. it it's, comes down to you know with all these things it's like it, it's not just our desire to see it obviously you know ben's ben's wants to is gonna have to want to do it right and yeah and that's that's the thing so so like when we you know when we do like you know um death stroke on hbo max and and we do things like that or like you know finish the or, or have a um the bath bat fleck film and all that is just like kind of showing everybody our desire you know what we would like to see and and yeah. ultimately it's going to be their decision so i think one thing a lot of people don't uh, don't kind of take into account is like how long these films take i mean if you think yeah. about it it's, three years yeah it's like yeah two three years you know yeah. um just to get one done. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and after, you know, if you do, you do three of these, it's almost a decade that you've been doing this. So right. it's, it's tough, especially for the actor like, because, you know, they, they can't take any other jobs except for the job. I mean, that part, mm -hmm. you know, you know, the, the, the shooting schedule for these kind of films are pretty rigorous. They're long, you know, yeah. it's not like you can just be like, Hey, let me do this. They can't do what I do where I work on everything. Right. They can't be <laughs> like, Hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to shoot this film and then we go fly over here and shoot this film. And then do it. No, it's cause yeah, they, there's a lot of training. There's a lot of, you know, kind of getting ready, preparing for the part and yeah. there's a lot of reshoots and, you know, a lot, lot of tape, of, you know, oh, yeah, you yeah. Know. You know, and uh, it's, it's tough, you know, and, and it's one thing to say like, yeah, I wish Ben can do this or that, but I mean, it, it really comes down to like, man, it's, it's, it's a, it's a big commitment. It's, it's really yeah. tiring. And, and that's why, you know, a lot of the filmmakers, uh, myself included, like we take it hard when, you know, the, the fans bash a film because we, we spend, that's a, that's a piece of our life, you know, that right. it's kind of, that we've done there and you know i mean granted cr criticism is fine but you know you have to understand that like it, it, there's a lot of decisions that are made that are sometimes out of your hands right sometimes yeah, right. you know the studio makes it you know or somebody else is you know is calling the shots for some things or you know you you have plans to do something great but there's no money there's no budget for it right and yeah you gotta just pivot and okay what do we do here right it's it's not like we're in the sandbox and we have unlimited resources to get you know, things done, you know, yeah. there's, there's only a finite amount of time as well as, you know, trying to appease, you know, 20 other people who have their own opinions for a particular sequence or casting or mm -hmm. even a line of dialogue. And, you know, and you have to kind of like play the politics a bit and try to like mm -hmm. appease them all and, and try to get the film done. Right. Ultimately you right. want to get the film done. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's, and then you're not, and then once you get in a post, that's another thing. So there's, yeah. there's a ton of stuff that, like I said, a lot of people don't understand. That's just how, Mm -hmm. much goes into you know these films for sure yeah yeah and that's something that's always frustrates me you know i mean we do a weekly show where we just you know comment on on basically dc films and all that so it's like uh, we get frustrated when we hear people saying well i'm not gonna go my film? did you say good things about my film of course we do okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i must say to our episodes just to, just to yeah. be sure aren't you <laughs> yeah. yeah i must say though it, it is it is, it is weird when i when i hear people like talking about my films or me on like a podcast or something yeah. I mean, you know with with what we do at least in animation and, and even even in live action i'm i mean in live action like my name is is right after you yeah. know craft services or sometimes it doesn't even appear like i don't even think i i don't even think i'm on the zach snyder's justice league credits i didn't i don't think i saw myself on there i know i worked on it and you know but there are times when they'll just forget or they they just mm -hmm. 
I'm not on it. And, and that's the truth of it all. Like we're kind of these unsung, you know, people yeah. who work on it. and, uh, but it's really kind of, it's, it's really kind of, for me, it's weird because like, I'm, I'm working on the DC stuff. I'm working on, you know, all these big properties or, or characters. Um, but I don't really get feedback because you get a lot of times, like, well, most of the time you, you don't, the the product doesn't come out till two years later right. and that point i'm already on to something else i'm on i've done two or three other projects and so when it comes out and i, I hear feedback or or criticism whatever it's kind of like oh wait what, what, what movie was that and i have to kind of remind myself sometimes i have to watch it again to just remind yeah. myself like what, what what we were working on and a lot of the creative decisions that went along to to make those you know th those films like i remember for example um uh it was for dark knight returns one and two for example i knew it was gonna be a two-parter which was great mm -hmm. i i designed both films to be if you just watched them one at a time mm -hmm. even not together they were you know they were a very uh full you know cinematic experience like there's a whole arc we finish everything and and then there's a little bit of a teaser at the end to lead into the second part and both films are a very different note like the mm -hmm. setup in one isn't repeated in two and, right. and, the, and the stakes in two are very different than what was in one. Mm -hmm. And, and I crafted it that way. So I had to make sure, and of course, you know, Bob Goodman did the screenplay and he wrote a fabulous script adaptation, but even then I had to still kind of massage it and kind of like move things around and, and even look at Frank's original graphic novel and be like, okay, what exactly is happening in this, in this panel? Cause it's not like I could call Frank and be like, Frank, you know, Hey, what's happening here. It's, it's mostly what you guys saw is just my interpretation of what, of Frank stuff really is because you know it's just it was my kind of like looking through it from my 10 year old lens when I was first when I first read it that's what you guys saw and and I had to make a conscious decision of how to craft those films so that way they existed on their own mm -hmm. it was a happy accident that when you put them together that they worked really well that as you watch the first film and even the action sequences and the drama what's happening with Batman start escalating as you get to the second film and of course mm -hmm. it culminates with you know you had this high you know kind of um a moment where joker you know confronts batman right because there's a big mm -hmm. lead of that and then even after that once you normally that the movie would be done right i mean after that you've got the final confrontation between batman and superman mm -hmm. which i knew i wanted to kind of um make do something very different than what was in the comic book right uh because right. They, because they had done a lot of homages to frank's um end fight with superman batman in mm -hmm. in a lot of animated stuff mm -hmm. and i was like okay they already did that now how do i i want to do something else and yeah. so we had to kind of figure a way to kind of top that and and that's kind of what you know we have to do when we we adapt these things so that was one of those things where um as i as i work on these projects i try to feel out what what it needs right and and that's why like even with the man of steel ending which i know a lot of people like criticize but i was like hey you gotta admit you've never seen anybody do a you know a, a superhero you know uh balls to the wall fight like that no one's ever done that right i mean no, no. Is, and and I, you know that was something that i wanted to do i wanted to be like hey i saw this in anime i've never seen this in live action <laughs> let's do it right it was my dragon ball z homage <laughs> right 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 i mean so you're the one that kind of convinced zach to to kind of go all in and make sure that happened in downtown metropolis uh, well, well, because the thing was, was that it was always going to happen in downtown Metropolis, right? It, yeah. But what it was, was just the extent of it, because there were a lot of, uh, I remember um, it was myself, Damon Caro, and the VF, uh, who's the stunt coordinator, second unit director, as well as uh, DJ, who was the super, uh, supervising uh, mm -hmm. effects coordinator or supervisor, and mm -hmm. Zach. And we were sitting around and there was, you know, Zach likes to draw, he likes to put, you know, work things out on a whiteboard. And we were in Zach's office. And uh, and they invited me in, and they were figuring out the beats of the ending, and uh, and we were just talking about it, and and uh, and I was just like, and they would pitch it, and I'd be like, hey, that's cool, guys, but you know, I I had already did that in my animated movie, right? And I'd show them a clip, and then we'd do something else, and I'd be like, I did that, and they'd be like, man, you guys did a lot of the stuff already in the animated stuff, like we, you know, like there was like, you know, originally Zach wanted it to kind of go down the subway and a train hitting them and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I'm like, mm, yeah, you know, I was like, we kind of did that in Superman. And then, like it was like um, it was one of my one of the Superman films that I had worked on uh, the animated stuff, um, and like uh, and we had we had talked through a bunch of stuff and uh, and I was and Zach was like, yeah, you guys did a lot of it. I was like, okay, well, I have some I have an idea, Zach. You know, what if we did something like this? And I kind of pitched it to him and I showed him some examples. I was like, what if tonally this is what we're going for? And and he was like, 
that sounds cool. Yeah. And then we talked through all the different beats because we, you know, we knew that we wanted to get back to Grand Central Station. So I had to figure yeah. out where it all goes. Yeah. There, you know, originally there was a sequence where they they go uh, at a bridge. There was a, a like the they, originally they were supposed to be fighting inside a collapsed building, and then they were gonna be, get shot out to another building, and then more fights. And it was eventually gonna go back onto the street, and then, then there was that that bit where you saw where. Um, where Zod kicks the uh, a tanker and the tanker goes away and Superman yeah. kind of flies in between and it, it blows up. So that whole sequence I, I came up with because I want I had this image in my head that I thought it was kind of cool where I wanted I wanted cars to fall out of the sky and hit them while they're punching it out and like kind of like you know bouncing off of them. Yeah. But I was like, how do I set that up? And I thought. Well, if I blow up a building, a tall building, like a like a parking structure, and the parking structure kind of like leans, all the cars on the top can slide off and fall down to the street while Zod and Superman are duking it out. So it was really just me thinking, oh, that's kind of cool. Let me try that. And you know, and and so yeah, you see that in the film, you know, and then yeah. and then that was eventually going to lead into the uh uh Zod doing the I beam uh, uh Superman you know melting the I beam that Zod that Zod yeah. Uh, swings at him and then eventually it leads to Zod basically I can fly and then there's this big battle but I remember I was telling Zach that you know up until we had, if you guys think about it, up until that point the last time you saw two flying superheroes or two beings in live action film doing a fight was the Matrix uh, was it Revolutions right and mm -hmm. that was it that was the last time and I remember yeah. telling I, I, I talked with Zach I was like okay as much as I love the Matrix film but I told him like they just it was it was kind of a wasted effort because all you would see them was just do this. They were just doing this. Yeah. They were flying around. They're doing this. And the only thing that was cool is that you saw that kind of because uh, it was raining and you saw this kind of like water ripple kind of mm -hmm. come from the impact. And yeah. that's all they did over and over again. And I was just like, oh, this is kind of boring. Like there's got to be something more to it. And so um, you know when we crafted the fight again, when I do my fights as well, it's like the background is also a character. So we want to integrate the background into the choreography and and you're escalating like you know what happens as you go you know from fight to fight and and eventually of course this led to you know Superman flying and them flying at each other, hitting them and, and going through buildings and all this kind of stuff. And and that was the kind of things that like you know I had never seen before, right? I had never seen yeah. anything at that scale. And of of course you know it was one of those things where like. Um, you know, when I watched Superman 2, I always wondered, you know, it was always like, you know, Superman like flies away and leads him out of, you know, away from, you know, from the popular air, which was cool. But the only problem is that Zod, Superman couldn't do it. Because if, if you saw in the scene earlier, Zod was like, you took away Krypton from me. I'm going to take away everything from you. And right. he was going to, he would have I-beamed Lois and Perry and just started yeah. killing everybody. Yeah. And that's why Superman had to yeah. like stop him right uh and yeah, so it's a different kind of fight, yeah. right it's a different because yeah. that's why when i was reading people saying like why doesn't he just fly away i'm like okay he would fly away but zod would just kill us all i mean that was yeah, yeah. Zod was zod like was gonna fly away yeah, yeah zod was like i you took everything away from me and also there's no super jail right there there was no <laughs> there was no like kryptonite or anything that they could bring to to you know to to, to capture zod so you know i mean when i remember when zach was telling me how it ends i was like okay i can see how that goes mm -hmm. i mean it was you know, a lot of people was controversial, but I mean, how else are you going to stop Zod? I mean, it was, it was, yeah. it was, it was looking at at super beings through a lens of like, what if they, what if they showed up today, right? And how yeah. to react, and and how would that fight actually be in in a place like Metropolis? Now, I would say though, and that by the time Superman fights Zod and is crashing through the buildings, I would say most of the population has kind of evacuated out from, at least from yeah. the epicenter, right? Because right. you think about it, if you're at the epicenter of, you know, the Black Zero showing up and all yeah. that kind of crazy, you're not going to be sticking around, right? You're not going to be like, right. yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang out here. I, most, I would say that most people were were out, but of course there's some people on the streets. I mean, it, it has to happen because one yeah. of the things, one of the gripes that I, I had with Superman Returns, for example, and I, I don't want to knock it, I, I like what Brandon Routh did, but... Mm -hmm. If you watch the ending, they're, they're like there's I remember there's a scene where like glass gets broken on a on a yeah. building and it's falling and everybody looks up going, Oh no, but nobody runs or moves <laughs> because I knew Superman was gonna show up. And so yeah. so what happens is that in that in that sequence, you never really saw because normally when you do sequences like that, you had to have a give and take. There's a seesaw balance, right? Mm -hmm. You have to show something terrible, something good happened, something terrible, something good happened, right? And um, and because if you if all you show is People getting saved, people getting saved, people getting saved. Then there's no stakes, right? At that point, right. it just feels like, oh, no one's gonna get hurt because you might as well just be like, Superman's gonna save me, right? Yeah. And uh, and that was one of the things that like we we worked hard on to try to make sure we there's that balance. I mean, you know, 
I, I, I you know, going looking back at it, I'm sure we could have added some some more beats, but again, that ending was really long. Like we yeah. we had we had a fight sequence in the Indian Ocean. We had the whole sequence with the the whole like um, Perry and and everybody running away from that building that's falling mm-hmm. behind them. Uh, then we had the whole like fighter jet sequence with the you know mm-hmm. with Lois on the C seventeen and all. I'm just so, like that was like a it was like a, I call it like a, a orchestration of chaos because there's like there's so many things that were cross cutting. But again, to to Zach's credit, I mean if you notice it, like when you cross cut from the different kind of you know. Uh, characters and and what what's happening it's clear you know what's happening like perry and them are here lois is here this is what they have to overcome superman has a job he has to do it here he has to come back because you know so it it all tracks well as opposed to just watching it and not kind of understanding and if you watch the films you'll see that you know yeah no i really appreciated the ending of that film just because i mean it it made you feel like there were real stakes there were real consequences and and that's something i always feel is lacking in a lot of superhero films and and that's why i was like so disappointed uh, because of the it's hard to do something like that because, um, you know, everybody has different views of how superhero films should be. Mm-hmm. And again, granted, everybody has different taste, tastes and stuff. Um, cause like, I, you know, I, you, you mentioned it earlier, like my, my favorite Superman was George Reeves, right? Cause that was the mm-hmm. Superman that I grew up with. Yeah. And in that one, he wasn't doing anything that I, we had done in man of steel, but I, I liked it for the charm for that sure. era. And of course I saw it as a kid. Right. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that as you do modern versions of these you know iconic characters as well as stories that people you know know and love there it has to change and adjust because even if like the you know uh if the reeve superman came out today right there's there's a lot of things that people would be harping on it right like the time travel Mm -hmm. thing Uh, that's a little bit right um but but when you do modern superheroes like you know, from Mar- what Marvel's doing and what DC is doing, as well as like what you see on the boys on Amazon stuff like that. Like, yeah. you know, there is a sophistication to it that the audience is already like expecting, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's very similar to like after Saving Private Ryan, right? Mm-hmm. Like every World War II film has to like basically be on that level, right? Yeah. Or else the audience is like, no, not <laughs> even gonna, I'm not even, even going to look at it. And yeah. I think that's kind of what happened with with the DC films and the Marvel films more recently is that they they've elevated it to a certain point where these stories have to kind of transcend what the audience kind of expects, but at the same time serve them what they want. And that's where, Mm -hmm. you know, that's where a lot of kind of like uh, disagreements happen because who are you serving exactly? Right. I mean, that's Mm -hmm. why like when I, even when I make my films, I tell people, I just make it for myself. Right. I, Mm -hmm. I, I try to, I'm the first kind of audience member. Now mm-hmm. there are times when I'll be like, okay, well the fans love this part about this character or they love this. I'll keep that in mind. But at the same time, ultimately, you know, I'm still a filmmaker myself and a storyteller and I have to kind of distill it down to what I love about that story or about the characters or the themes. And I have to kind of pull that and, and kind of run with that because if you try to please everybody, you're going to please no mm-hmm. one, right? Even right. yourself. And that's why when you do, like, again, I've done a lot of adaptations of these kind of, you know, stories, you know, for both Marvel and DC, you know, you have to find that nice kind of common balance. And that was one thing that I liked about, you know, Zach's initial take is when he had told me his his initial ideas of what, you know, the first five films were going to be and everything. I was like, well, that's cool. Because there was a lot of things that he was drawing upon from the different source material, but it wasn't a direct translation, right? Like, for example, like with Marvel, right? You watch... Even though their their Infinity Wars and all that stuff is is a loose translation of what they did with the Infinity Gauntlet story and whatnot, mm-hmm. you know, but Thanos's plan was pretty much similar, right? Getting the gems, mm-hmm. and what Zach was doing is he was drawing things that weren't really interconnected. Like if you think about it, like he was taking a Frank Miller Batman mm-hmm. and throwing it in to a very different Superman that we don't really are familiar with, right? It's a Superman that grew up now, right? Not mm-hmm. not you right. know, with you know, uh, mom, pa, Kent, you know, apple pie, mm-hmm. American, you know, all that kind yeah. of stuff in the fifties. And so it was a really interesting kind of, you know, uh, juxtaposition between the two of, of how, um, of how they, uh, they interacted with each other. Right. And then throwing in wonder woman. And then of course this new version of Aquaman, you know, of what Jason had done. So it was really interesting where, you know, you, you saw a new 52 version of Cyborg, you know, mm-hmm. with this kind of new version of Barry Allen that maybe Jeff Johnson kind of heralded in. Because remember, Barry Allen had been dead for how long mm-hmm. in the comics ever since, you know, uh, Crisis on, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Infinite Earths, right? Yeah. So, like, 
they're, they're, they were pulling a lot of different versions of these heroes and putting them together. And I think that's mm-hmm. where a lot of fans or, or, or people who like the comics or, or just, you know, watching these films couldn't understand where he was drawing from. But of course, for me, like I've worked on all mm-hmm. of these things. <clears throat> I was like, oh, that's cool. That's this guy or that's well, this guy. And I love them. I, yeah, I, I, want, I want to see new ideas yeah. and new stories yeah, put like, out. Yeah. Like I'm a, I'm a huge like you know WWE fan and I love it whenever they do like a a battle royale or a royal rumble where they just throw in everybody and guys who aren't really supposed to be fighting each other because they're both bad guys or they're all yeah. in there to me that was kind of like what Zach was doing and 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 I appreciate it I was like oh this is cool I was, again cuz nobody had done that before right and 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 for me the the Batman that that Zach wanted to do and that was Ben yeah. was doing, which was this Frank Miller Batman, but there was a Road to Redemption that mm-hmm. was that was written in there was something that I, I was totally behind because I mean again uh, Frank Miller's well, Batman's one of my favorite ones, right? You know? Well, and that and that's the thing that's so frustrating to us as fans because I mean we we know and and I've kind of like informally called this five picture arc like the Superman sa- sa- saga because that's basically what it is. You know, you start off with oh, yeah. Man of Steel. We know obviously you know you, you have the the big confrontation in the second film and then kind of like the um, kind of turning the corner that we get in Justice League. And now there's a much bigger enemy to fight. And then, you know, it feels like there's going to be one more really um, uh, significant thing that all these heroes that have now banded together and become the Justice League that they're going to have to overcome and fight. And and then it feels like the fifth film was just going to be this. This is the Superman that we all know and love because this was oh, yeah. his arc, you know? No, I mean, basically, it, what I liked what Zach was doing was basically, you know, like I think I heard him talking about it with Chris Terrio. It's a deconstruction mm-hmm. of the character, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the idea is that um, we start with the character of Batman, for example, that is unfamiliar. And in a lot of ways, even Superman, what he did with 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 Clark, it's mm-hmm. it's an unfamiliar version of the Superman and Batman character. And and what we're seeing is is their road to become the one that we know and love, right? And, and that was something that I, I really liked what Zach was wanted to do. Because if you look at the Marvel films, if you flip it, the Marvel films came out and it's it's what you expect, which was great. And right. then as as the different factions kind of you know butt heads or whatnot, you had something like Civil War and and a different kind of mm-hmm. breaking off of the characters. And, and 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 then the the alliances start to fracture at that point. Mm-hmm. But what Zach was doing is the opposite, where mm-hmm. it was something where you had you had all these different factions and they're very different from each other and they have to come together for a common, for a common, you know, goal, which was, you know, you would see you know, with dark side or whatnot. And, and they would, and it was, I, I call it like how Stella got a groove back, but it was basically <laughs> how like Batman basically refinding himself. I mean, if you notice it's, it's planted in there where, where even Alfred is saying like, you're going a little bit too far, you know, all of this stuff, but Zach sets it up. He sets a Batman up who, is broken. Who's broken more than mm-hmm. anything else? The fact that, like, you know, that his Robin is dead. Uh, he's 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 basically turned into what he what he most is afraid of, right? Um, yeah. But he's but he's this close to going the villain, becoming the villain, right? It's that whole like, if you live long enough, you become the villain, right? If you're a hero, kind of thing. And 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 that's what I thought was really brilliant about Batman v Superman was that you basically took what would normally be a hero and made it a versus thing. Right. And, and you, and you, and the idea is that Superman's death and what that means to the world, especially to, to Bruce is what changes him and, and leads him onto this path of redemption. Yeah. And the idea yeah. with Clark, you know, he was always told like, Hey, you got to keep, keep your powers, you know, um, a secret. Don't, you know, don't take a lot of, you know, uh, don't get a lot of, you know, publicity kind of thing. But then when he comes out, he has to come out. Because I mean, if you even, yeah. even when you watch Man of Steel, he doesn't want like he he. There's that scene where he's talking to the priest, which I think was really cool. He's trying to figure out like what do I do. Mm-hmm. But and if you look at it, he actually turns himself in. He turns himself into Zod and says, "Go ahead and take," him, knowing that he's probably gonna die, <laughs> right? right? But he only breaks free because Zod tells him, "Oh, by the way, I'm gonna rebuild a new Krypton off of your bones, and everyone's everyone's been gonna be enslaved or die on Earth." Mm-hmm. And that's when he's like, "Hold up." Yep, <laughs> I gotta break out of here, right? And that's when he. But if if Zod didn't say that, if Zod had basically been like, "Cool, we got the we got the Matrix, we're gonna go and make a new Krypton someplace else," mm-hmm. I think Super Clark would have just gone with him, right? Because he would have yep. saved us all, right? And that's. Yeah. But people forget that he sacrificed himself. Like he literally right. just said, "Take me," right? And then, and again, it's a guy who grew up now, being selfless, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And 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 doing this for people he doesn't know, and and that to yeah, me I yeah. think was was what I think was great about this version of Clark. So, anyways, what I was gonna say is that with with these characters, 
they were all unfamiliar, but they're all versions of, of these characters that exist in the comics in some mm -hmm. version or another over the years. Right. And like I said, Zach just put them together and kind of like, you know, let's, and Zach and Chris was like, let's see what happens when you put them all together. Right. And yeah. I thought to me, I was like, Oh, that's fantastic. What a really interesting new way of kind of doing. Cause even when I did my animated series, we always have to stick to the different kind of versions of them. Like if we were going to do the new 52 versions, like we had to stick to what, Superman and Batman were in the new 52. If we were doing a version of um, like something in the Bruce Timm universe, mm -hmm. it's very iconic. So I, I have to keep to Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. All of them have to still exist into that Justice League Unlimited uh, Bruce mm -hmm. Timm kind of universe. And I, I couldn't stray from that. So it was really interesting with what Zach was doing because he was taking these different versions from these different kind of almost universes, putting them together and, you know, and mixing it up. And, and uh, to me, that was fantastic. I know, and I know I keep raving on that, but I, no. that's the one thing I keep telling people, like, this is why, you know, I, I enjoyed working on these films because I had done so many versions of, of Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman over the yeah. years that it was fresh, right? It was, it was, it, it was, was. Kind of looking at it from that a new lens. Well, that's why we gravitated towards it as fans. I mean, this was just something that was just, it was unlike anything we had seen and it felt real. It felt like the real stakes and, and the whole idea. And we know Zach, you know, just kind of had a five film film plan there. Um, you know, like even Zach has acknowledged that, you know, at, you know, after five films, I mean, you know, these actors have made like about a 10 year commitment, you know, just to, just to oh, even yeah. five I mean, films. It's, like, it's so it, it has to end. It has to end. Like and even, even Zach, I'm sure Zach was going to end it and lead to something like a flashpoint or something. Yeah, I mean, I think that was the plan was that they would do like, you know, the the four or five parters and then mm -hmm. we would do a flashpoint kind of reboot mm -hmm. where you can bring in a new cast afterwards. I mean, we did that with my flashpoint movie, right? Mm -hmm. If you notice the flashpoint right. was we went from a justice from a justice league unlimited kind of type of uh uh justice league to the new 52 when you see at the end. And I thought that would be fantastic. I mean, seeing Jason Momoa and Gal Gadot do, um, mm -hmm. you know, fighting each other as, you know, as Aquaman and Wonder Woman in a Flashpoint universe, that would have yeah. been just fantastic, <laughs> right? And I remember, you know, us talking about that briefly. And I and I told Zach, like, you know, I did the Flashpoint movie. So whenever you're going to do that, just give me a call. I'd love to do this, right? Like, yeah. I'd love to do, the, you know, the live action version of it. Well, Jay, I'm going to I'm going to bring Nana in because uh, we've had a bunch of questions that have shown up in the chat. So um, I'm going to go ahead and add Nana to the stream here. Sure. Hi, Jay. Hey, How are Hi. you? Hello. Hey, Nana. What do you hey. got? What are the fans saying? Is anybody still around? Where's Dale? There's quite a few There's quite a few of them, and they seem to have quite a lot of fun. So um, okay. I have some questions that are not necessarily related to the Snyderverse. Sure. One of them is, uh, we know that Las Vegas is CG. But how will the Norse gods tune be animated? If you know that, it's from Resident Grigo. Mm. Uh, we are still in production on the Norse one. I can't really give any details other than that Zach and I are working on it, and it's badass, awesome, amazing, and it's gonna blow your socks off. That's all I can really say. But it looks great. I mean, but I can't really comment other than the fact that we're just in production on it right now. You you can't say like what phase of the production, like what what actually is kind of being worked on at this point. Uh, we, we've done the casting already and we're in pre-production right now. So okay. that's pretty much where we're at doing designs okay. and storyboards and all that kind of good stuff. That's so awesome. do I'm you think forward. we'll have some news soon? Uh, I, I think, I think for the fans, keep an eye out for, um, the prequel to army of the dead, which should be, they'll probably do, uh, something maybe, uh, before the end of the year or, Maybe earlier than that. I'm sure they'll do something after the movie comes out in May, May 21st. Okay. Netflix, by the way. May 21st. Uh, so uh, I'm sure after that, soon after that, they'll they'll start doing announcements of both the prequel movie, uh, the live action prequel movie, as well as the animated series. All right. Okay. So then there's a question from Joshua Van Dyne. If you could direct your own DC or Marvel movie, what would it be and why? I assume that's a live action. Mm. Oh Jesus! There is. Uh... There's like a ton of them. Let me think. Um, Justice League well, Part I, Two. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just, <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I think Zach would fight me for that one. But uh, I mean, I always want to do Constantine. I love Constantine. I like the Justice League Dark cast. Yeah. Um. Let, let me think. What else? I would do. Um. Uh. I'd love to do a Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman would be fun too. I don't know. I think I'd love to do them all. You know. I, I think. I think that all of all of them would be would be pretty pretty cool. To do i mean is there anything that the fans would want me to do like in well particular? i mean you have to do spider-man i mean that's your favorite character 
I've done Spider-Man a lot. Uh, uh, for live action, uh, though. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'd love to do that. I mean, although Spider-Man's hard because there's been so many good Spider-Man films mm-hmm. already. I mean, and, yeah. and it's hard to top them. But, oh, you know what? I would love to do Spider-Man Blue. I love mm. Spider-Man Blue. That's one of my favorite uh, Spider-Man stories. I think I would do that. That's okay. that, that to me. Because uh, I love... We don't get it often. We don't uh, in animation. We we don't often get get the chance to like you know do love stuff or like do things that make people cry, and that's that's to me the stuff that I, I really like. You mm-hmm. know, uh, to me that that's that is the if you can make the audience cry and feel mm-hmm. something, that is like the epitome of, of film art to me. I mean, that's why like the the opening of Up is so powerful, right? Like oh, honestly, fantastic. I don't. I don't even know what the rest of the movie of up is. I forget about it. Right. All I know is that there's giant birds and, and the, 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 the house floats away. Right. And there's talking dogs, talking but dogs, yeah. that opening, that opening for up was so powerful and so like perfect that it justified the, the admission. Like I, I could have just walked out of the movie after that opening and just been like, I'm done. That, that's, that's so good. You know? <laughs> well, and you know, that's, I, I would have to say that's where, you know, after seeing Zack Snyder's justice league, I ended up putting that as my number one DCEU film because there's so many of those moments that you're talking about, like an up, you know, that just kind of get you teared up. Like that was just sprinkled all throughout, you know, Zach's film. And and that's what just makes it such an amazing film. And it's like, yes, I want more of that. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Me too. I want more of it too because <laughs> I could use a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So MS Taz 98 is asking, what current animated films or anime are your favorite? Mm. Oh, uh, I'm I, so I grew up in the I'm a 90s dude in terms of when it comes to anime. I mean, I love uh, all the classics like Akira and Ghost in the Shell and uh, like Trigun and Cowboy Bebop and um, uh, Jesus, I, I even like like the, the the really cheesy, not cheesy, but I love Ranma one half. I love that. I just I just mm. love Ranma. Um, but I, again, uh, more recent stuff. I love One Punch. I wish I had, I wish I had seen One Punch Man before I had done Man of Steel because I think I probably would have had Superman go even more crazier. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, there's a lot. There's actually a lot of anime I watch. I don't get to watch as much because I like to watch it in original Japanese, which means mm. I can't watch it while I'm dra- while I'm drawing, right? And so most yeah. of the stuff that I watch now is because I have it on in the background. But with anime i have to like watch it so i can i can mm-hmm. you know read the subtitles um so usually like if if i get a sub, uh, like uh, if i get like somebody to you know say hey you should watch this this is pretty cool uh, so my all-time favorite i would say is your name is my favorite anime uh just because of how good it is if you've never seen it, it it's amazing like on paper if you were to just say hey this is a uh a, a young adolescent romance time travel body switching film you'll be like what this yeah. can't be what is this? You watch and it's fantastic it's beautiful it's, it's so it's so beautifully made from you know mm-hmm. the, the animation to the, the the backgrounds i mean it's just so good hmm. okay john dimitri is asking if the snyderverse were to continue in animated form what style of animation would you envision it wait say that again if Snyderverse were to continue in animated form, what style of animation would you envision it? Hmm, that's a tough one. <laughs> I would say, oh, geez. Well, what's funny is that Zach has a very eclectic art style. So I don't know if he would even want it to be anything that's already been done. Zach's always yeah. like, I, I want it to be something unique that hasn't been done before. <laughs> I don't know, honestly. I don't really know what what would be a good one because it's really, it just depends on the story, right? I mean, it really depends on what the story is and what what is required for it. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know. That's a that's a good one though. Uh, yeah, I'd have to think about that. Maybe when we do Justice Con three, I'll come back and I'll be like, "This is it. Look at it." All right, all right. I'm saving it then. <laughs> um, Paulus. Cesar, I think, I hope. Um, Jay, you're an inspiration and joy to listen to. Last year's Justice Gone, you were hilarious and amazing. Now the question is, what was your personal favorite DC animation project that you worked on and why? All the best. <laughs> oh, oh my God. It's like trying to pick my favorite child. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, mm. Well, I mean, Under the Red Hood was a fun one because that was the one of the, one of the ones where I went to the director, Brendan Vietti, 
and after I read the script and I said, give me the opening. I want to kill Robin. Give me the opening. Because I had already just <laughs> in my head as a movie, as I read that script, I was like, boom, I had it all shot. I had it all worked out. And, uh, and then Brandon's like, okay. <laughs> and so I did that. So I did the killing Robin was one of my favorite ones to do. Um, geez, what would be, I mean, I, I mean, again, I, I would go back to of the ones that I had done. I would say dark Knight returns one and two, uh, Flashpoint are probably my two most favorite ones because I was kind of like let they allowed me to do anything I want for the most part. <laughs> yeah, I think I think okay. that's about it. I think those two would be the, the two biggest ones. No, those are great ones. Okay, and Yatsi Skellington is asking, what comic book storyline would you like to adapt as your next DC movie if you were asked? Mm. Hmm. Wait, say that again. I'm thinking. Say that again. What was the question? <laughs> sure. What comic book storyline would you like to adapt as your next DC movie if you were asked? So say you were asked that you can do any DC movie you want. Which comic book storyline would you go with? Uh, I would do Kingdom Come. Mm. Yeah, I okay. Kingdom Come. There is one I would do Kingdom one. Come if I could do it. I yeah. would do it Kingdom Come. That's a good choice. I'm surprised that one hasn't been done yet. Yeah, it's it's a hard one. It's a hard one yeah. to do. Um, yeah. There are a lot of ones like I would have loved to have done Gotham by Gaslight, for example. Mm -hmm. And there's a yeah. lot of ones that they've already done, but I think Kingdom Come would have been one of the ones that I would definitely would have loved to do. Let me think. Is there anything else? Uh, I would have done. There's a really cool Batwoman Wonder Woman uh, storyline that was in the comics that I thought would have been a really good adaptation to do like a like a, uh, mm. a pairing of. The, I thought they would kind of pair up pretty nicely. Um, I don't know. There's there's too many really cool. There's so many good ones. Yeah. Uh, many. I'd, I'd love to see Identity Crisis get made, but I think that'll be a tough one to, yeah. <laughs> to do as an animated feature. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, actually, Crisis on Infinite Earths would have been pretty cool. That, that yeah. be, really, be... Just People be seem to really agree with the Kingdom Come idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So, I have one more. Uh, I'm going to shape it a little bit because I feel like you essentially this particular part you answered last just is gone, but I have a follow up to it. So David Brohack Williams asked, what was the feeling you got when you when they officially announced the Snyder Cut and knowing you were right all those years before? But you've answered that on the last just is gone. So I'm going to yeah. ask, what was it like to finally see the Snyder Cut? Uh, it was uh, it's really interesting. It was very um it was, I mean, it's, it's, it's really weird because it's one of those things where, like, I knew what was in the movie. I had seen mm -hmm. a lot of it in, in pieces. Um, so, it, but but seeing on, on screen, you know, it all put together and after, like, everything that, you know, the fans had done to really campaign and get it, mm -hmm. get it out there was, you know, to me, it was very vindication of the vision that Zach, you know, and company was really trying to do and to show like, listen, we had a really good film here. Like we had something mm -hmm. that I think the fans and I said this, you know, I've been saying this all along that if the fans knew what was in that movie, they would just flip. Right. And mm -hmm. and and it was true. I mean, you watch it and it, and it doesn't feel like, you know, that long of a movie. It, it, it no. goes, by, you know, and a lot of the things where people say like, hey, you know, we should have had these solo films of each character. And I'm like, it's all in there, right? You you it's have there. an introduction it, to Barry, you got an introduction great. to Cyborg. Yeah. I mean, it's all there. And um and and that's why like watching it was really, you know, to me it was one of those things where like I got teary-eyed a lot of times. Like I was mm -hmm. literally was watching it teary-eyed. Yeah. Um, not only from what the story was there, but also thinking about what it took to get this on the screen, right? And and yeah. and, and and a lot of the the kind of moments in the movie of how how many how many of those moments were kind of robbed to us as the fans because we never got to see it and they were mm -hmm. such amazing moments that the actors were doing that the vfx guys were doing that just overall as a as an experience <laughs> we didn't get in the we didn't cut right mm -hmm. and and seeing it there again i got emotional because it was like you know this is how beautiful beautiful the film that i that i had been a part of right that, mm -hmm. that i had been a, that right. zach had invited me and i was lucky enough to help him on and and I'm watching it for the you know finally right all finally done with everything put together and and having you know uh, Junkie Excel's music on it which was fantastic and 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 just the the tonally where to show like this is what it was supposed to be all all from the get go mm -hmm. and and again it was one of those things where it was a little surreal but at the same time it was, it was vindication right but it was also a little part of me was like 
see i wanted to say all the all the trolls online who kept telling me that like i didn't know what i was talking about i was like okay i know what i was talking about i worked on this thing like i i literally have conversation with zach i'm there on set i'm i i see the scenes i, I know exactly what's on there i just couldn't tell people about it right and you know i'm hoping that you know i mean again we talked about this earlier i mean it, if ben ever comes back to the role I, I really really hope that he gets to do his solo batman film mm -hmm. because whether it's the script that I read or something else, you know, I think whatever Ben would come up with is something really like special mm -hmm. and, and yeah. fantastic. And that's, and that's been my thing as well as I know people get like hung up on idea. Well, you've got, you know, Pattinson's Batman over here. You can't have a Ben Affleck Batman at the same time. But I, I would say as a fans, I, I've never heard anyone complain about having two different versions of the same character at all. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. you think about it, there's, there's a, the, the, the Superman that's in the Lois and, and yeah. Clark, or you know and there's also you know there's also the superman that's in the animated stuff so i mean you, you already have multiple versions yeah. of a character in media yeah. i don't see there would be a problem of them doing nobody cares yeah yeah nobody cares i mean they just want a good yeah. movie they just want a good movie they can go to and watch something that they like because i mean here's the thing if you think about it when my dark knight returns came out nobody was like wait a minute this doesn't look like the new 52 or bruce tim's justice league this is, you know, Boulder Dash or whatever, right? I mean, it, it was just another version of Batman, right? And it mm -hmm. can exist with all the other Batmans out there. Batman, Gotham by Gaslight, and all these other versions of, of these stories. And I think doing like a Panson Young version or a Frank Miller, you mm -hmm. know, a Ben Affleck type version or even another one, right? I mean, I think there Do is it all. Yeah. room for it. I mean, I'd still like to see, you know, Batman as a father, like what I did with mm -hmm. the son of Batman thing where him and, and mm -hmm. Damien and, and you know, having right. Nightwing in there, and what does that mean, right? Because that's, a, I mean, when I did those films, that was a version of Batman that I thought was really interesting because it was Batman as a father and mm -hmm. him trying to teach Damien to not walk the path that that he's been. Right. But then, yet he's dealing with Damien, who's basically been trained by the League of Shadows to be the ultimate ninja, and yeah. it has no qualms of killing. But he's 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 developing a conscience because of what Bruce is trying to teach him. Mm -hmm. That's cool, right? I mean, that's a Batman that yeah. I haven't seen. And I would love to see that explored either in, uh, you know, in a series or in another film. But that can all exist within, you know, a Pattinson Batman, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Ben Affleck Batman, and even like, you know, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker and all these other, ver I mean, they all can exist. Like no one's really going to care that, that they don't all connect to each other in some, you know, no. grand scheme of things, right? I mean, no, we, nobody I, cares. I, I, even if you bring Keaton back for the Flashpoint film, I mean, everyone's all for this stuff, you know, <laughs> so it's like. It, it, there's a there's a sea of enthusiasm out there that I just hope, you know, I hope DC Films and Warner Brothers uh, or Actually, one you know, of the studios just, just tap if into. I ever, if I ever did a live action version of something, I'd like to do a Batman Beyond movie too. I think oh, there I'd you go. Batman Beyond. That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Would you have it be Michael <laughs> Keaton? Somebody <laughs> make somebody make that hashtag. Yeah, like there's, there's yeah, too many cool. I mean, there's, yeah, there's just too yeah. many cool stuff that I mean, oh. both DC and Marvel have some really great mm -hmm. storylines that have yet to be tapped. And uh, you know, I mean, I again, I'm, I'm at the point in my career that like I still have a lot of years ahead of me. But at the same time, I'm like, man, I wish I could. There's more that I could do. I wish I could just like put my head in a bottle and just create <laughs> movies for the next century, right? Because yeah. you know, most of these films take so much of your life. But uh, and there's so much cool stuff, right? There's different versions of, of mm -hmm. all these different kind of stories. I mean, I'd love to do eventually do a musical, a musical of the superheroes. That'd be cool too. <laughs> but anyways, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I mean. I like yeah. I love everything, and I and I think that like um, you know, moving forward from from now, you know, with what Zach had accomplished with with having the Snyder Cut come out and and the fans kind of demanding mm -hmm. for you know these kind of movies, I, I'd really like to see what the the studio's response is going to be right. I mean, ultimately, yeah. you know, uh, it's all going to be like they're going to see the analytics of what the, um, you know, the streaming, what the numbers are. What they're going to look at, like how the Blu-rays mm -hmm. are being sold and everything, and you know that 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 might eventually influence what comes after this, right? I mean, yeah. we hope just so. to say that they they don't try something else. I mean, uh, I, I would have I would have never thought that the Snyder Cut would have came, come out as soon as it did, mm -hmm. but I did have I did have you know. Uh, a good idea that it would mostly because you know of hbo max and them wanting to really get into the streaming kind of that was the game changer yeah and that was i mean again like it's a no-brainer right if, if you had something that it's like you know it's like having exclusive on playstation or xbox right you put it on there because you want people to buy the console it's the same thing right. with the streamers. like you do you do these exclusives 
so that people will will mm -hmm. sign up for it just to watch it, right? I mean, I, right. I do the same thing. Like I I, mm -hmm. I sign up for Disney Plus just to watch The Mandalorian and you know and any of the Marvel stuff, and I've got HBO Max so I could watch you know the Snyder Cut and and, and you know Game of Thrones and all those things that I like watching watching on on, uh, on HBO. So it's it's one of those things where we're in a really kind of interesting time because it's it, it's in a lot of ways the studios are looking at what the consumers or what the mm -hmm. audience is kind of like what their tastes are. Mm -hmm. um and they're willing to take chances and and you know kind of trust filmmakers like zach to kind of you know bring a vision and we hope and so stick yeah. with it i mean we'll see i mean we'll <laughs> see but like i said the snyder cut is a good kind of testament of showing what can be done you know? yeah absolutely um so thank you nana i'm uh, jay did you want to talk about trosse at all Oh, uh, sure. Um, so Tresse is, um, so I'm show running, um, a show for Netflix called Tresse. It's, it's based on supernatural Filipino, um, uh, uh, kind of mythology. Hold on one sec. Um, <laughs> Looks so good. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love this art style. So this is the first issue. Yeah. Our first classic novel, I think. It's it's not. I think it's going to be available here in the U.S. It's mostly available in the Philippines right now. But yeah. um, but anyways, uh, Netflix gave me a call. He said, "Hey, would you like to show run this show?" And uh, I was like, "It's you know, it's based on Filipino mythology. It's kind of like a procedural." And I thought, "Oh, that's cool. Am I getting this because I'm Filipino? Because I've never gotten a job because I'm <laughs> Filipino." Uh, but apparently, you know, I mean, my movies have done well on their streaming service and whatnot. So um, they they. They contacted me, so we 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 did um, oh, the first season. We we just finished it. It's going to be coming out uh, this year. Uh, we're going to be announcing the the date soon. We just did the first cast announcement of L Liza Soberano and Shay Mitchell for our lead. Um, but it's cool. I mean, it's it's set in Manila. It's set in the Philippines. It's 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 kind of like my love letter to all the stories that my parents had told me growing up about you know, you know, Filipino spirits and and like kind of like mm -hmm. supernatural. Things. And it, you know, in the Philippines, they don't they don't pull back on on the kind of like fairy tales. Like the, the those those mythological beings or, or creatures, like they'll straight up murder you in your street in your in your sleep. Like there's no like, hey, you know, they're they're gonna grant wishes. No, it's 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 pretty hardcore. So um, so anyways, uh, so we did that. It's you know, I did this. You know, this was the first thing that I did for my for my studio, and uh, it looks great. I and mean, it's based on a comic book, and you know, I uh, you know. For the fans out there, should check it out. Uh, like I said, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be doing some press about this for the next, um, probably next couple months, uh, mm -hmm. uh, leading up to when it eventually comes out. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys can check it out. I'll do a bunch more. I'll probably do some more like interviews and podcasts once once I get the green light from Netflix to kind of start really like promoting it. But I think it's awesome. something that's very near and dear. And I think for all the fans who like, uh, who like me, I think you should watch it because <laughs> I think it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. Awesome. I, love, I love the art style. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things we wanted to do is even the incidental characters, we tried to make them look Filipino a little bit so they look a little Asian. Um, okay. So, uh, but yeah. And also, we, we, we took a lot of um, kind of like uh, locations that are in Manila uh, and kind of set set a lot of the sequences there. So that way, if mm -hmm. you were walking around, you'd be like, hey, wait a minute. This looks like a scene, you know, where the characters got attacked by Aswang. And Aswangs are these like, they're like, their version of vampires so yeah. um but yeah so we, we we did i think what we did uh, i'm very proud of what my my small team did with this but it looks it looks great it i think it looks great i'm looking forward to it cool so all right so well that, um then i was gonna say that we're you know i think tomorrow zach is gonna be you guys are gonna be promoting the the mm -hmm. um army of the dead stuff so mm -hmm. that's, right. that's the animated project that i'm doing with zach um we are Still in production on that. Uh, it looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't let they, they haven't told me what I can say about it other than it looks awesome and that it's gonna come come out soon. I think that's about all I can say. <laughs> uh, uh, but it's been great. It's been great working with Zach on it because um, you know Zach had done um, Guardians, right? So he had done mm -hmm. the, the feature animation, but feature animation is very different than TV animation. So this was a really interesting thing to work with Zach on because in this one. I knew a lot more than Zach in, in some ways, you know, because, and I'm used to TV is where I come from, right? Whereas if I do feature, a lot of times I'm just 
I'm just kind of learning and, and watching, you know, from Zach. So this is one of those ones where I had to, I, you know, I talked to Zach, but Zach was able to pick it up. He's like, okay, cool. So he knew exactly. And, you know, and he's, I, I think he's having a good time. Like we're doing the records with all the actors and, you know, approving artwork and going over, you know, the storyboards and stuff and, and design. So I think he's having a lot of fun because it's almost like he's making a movie, but not really having to like shoot it. Like mm-hmm. and be, have to like be on location for like 18 months or something. Like something right. Crazy. So it's, I think he's. I, I think he's having a good time. I don't know, but I, I think so. <laughs> I've been able to convince him to do two of these with me, so so that's good. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at the voice it's, cast for it. It's phenomenal who you've got. Um, you got Christian Slater, Joe Manganiello, Harry Lennox, uh, Ross Butler, Vanessa Hudgens, uh, Christina Wren. Yeah, so yeah. just a, a whole bunch of great names. I, I heard Ray Porter uh, mentioned earlier, but uh, he wasn't on the list of uh, who was announced. So I don't know if that was a slip up or not, but. Oh yeah. I, I think Ray's, I mean, it's like what Zach mentioned earlier. Like usually when he has a project, he goes to the family, right? He usually right. does to the, he's worked with in the past. And uh, so when we were casting, whenever we were stuck or, or um, you know, there was a part that Zach's like, you know what? I think this guy could do it perfectly. And we're like, <laughs> And we're like, do you think he would do it? And Zach's like, let me give him a call. And then Zach would just let's just call him. And I was like, how cool is that? You just have these actors on speed dial. Like, <laughs> like normally we have to go through their agents or managers, yeah. and it gets you know just back and forth. But I think it's really cool. Like you know, because again, I, everybody loves working with Zach. I mean, that's the one thing I can't stress mm-hmm. enough. Everybody yeah. loves working with Zach, from the actors to the grips to everybody mm-hmm. on crew. So whenever like Zach gives you a call, you're more than happy to drop everything. Mm-hmm help out i mean that that was the one thing that i learned when i went when i was working on bbs with zach in detroit because remember um i was on i was man of steel in chicago for about three months Mm -hmm. but then when i went to be went to detroit for like eight months i saw a lot of the same guys right the same crew Mm -hmm. and 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 you know as as, you know you you, i have a lot of lunches with them and just hanging out and i and they're always like yeah you know love working with zach some of them have been working with zach since the dawn of the dead right (laughs) or and, and or even earlier than that and they're yeah. like, and they're like, whenever Zach calls, we just, we always, you know, if we can make it, we, we try to do anything we can to work mm-hmm. with them. And, and, yeah. and that was like the second film. And that's when I was like, wow, I mean, this, this is why people love working with Zach and, and mm-hmm. how like infectious it is to work with him. Cause he's, as you know, he's kind of like me, he gets super excited about, you know, talking about different projects or ideas and stuff. He's very passionate about it. And, and, and you want to work on it. You want to have, you want to have somebody who's at the helm who is very passionate about the project the story you know the characters mm-hmm. or whatever and because it just makes it easier right because then when, when you know when i come to work i feel like i'm just collaborating i'm just helping out i'm helping i'm helping the chef make this beautiful meal right and and i get to eat a little bit of it because it's it's this amazing meal and, and that's kind of like yeah. working with zach is kind of like that where like i'm always thankful any kind of opportunity i get to kind of collaborate with him and i'm constantly learning from him because you know th- there are a few things where like I'll even talk to him sometimes. Like, so how do you work with you know different actors and uh, you know uh, you know in case like you know one is more difficult than the other or one you know like because some actors you know they 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 don't want to take direction and some do and and it's really interesting. Like you know he'll he'll tell me like you know tips and stuff that he's done over the years or he's tried and whatnot and it and it, it's great. You know I mean these are these are the things that I love talking shop with directors like him and Ben Affleck and even Rick. You know talking about like so how do you do this when you guys are on mm-hmm. set. Or, and, and to me, it's fun because, again, it's, it's talking shop because it's it's a part of directing that I don't mm-hmm. normally do because I'm nor- normally just doing the animated stuff. But if I ever do live action, which I hopefully I love to do, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll already kind of know because, I've, again, I've gotten a lot of tips from you know from people like Zach, you know, who kind of helped me out over the years and kind of said, hey, you know what, this, this kind of works. Or, hey, if you have trouble doing this, use this lens or do that. You know, I was like, oh, uh, that's kind of cool. I didn't think about that. So it looked like we had a question asking if uh, Trisse means 13. Oh, uh, you'll 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 find out in the series, but uh, but yes, I mean you should you should definitely see it because uh, yeah. it's, so the main character is her name is Alexandra Tresse, so it's her last name. But there are mm-hmm. there is a lot of like meanings to it. Yeah. But if you're a fan of like you know uh, supernatural occult action adventure, even a little bit of superhero stuff, it's it's very I would say it's like my Justice League Dark in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of like uh, magic and monsters and that kind right. of stuff. It's also procedural and it's investigative in, in, in its ways but that's cool it's it's a fun thing and I, I can't i can't stress enough how proud i am of, of the project and i can't wait for you guys to see it yeah that's awesome 
Yep. Sign me up. I, I think that's a sent sentiment for all of us. <laughs> I think we're all interested in this. So. I didn't send this. That had to be Meg or Cole. <laughs> oh, somebody else doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it came from Justice Con account. So. Oh, did it? Okay. <laughs> Random <laughs> messages are popping up. Well, uh, I, I, is there anything else you all wanted to ask me? I'm sure they're going to ask me about like something about Ben Affleck's script or something like that. <laughs> You usually was, don't answer that, that but if you've got anything you're willing to say about it, we're, we're all yours. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they make it. I, 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 yeah. I, I had done a really amazing fight and fight sequence for that that I think only a handful of people have seen. Um, yeah. That's it, but I can't share it, unfortunately. Well, it's, I mean, Joe Manganiello has been talking about a, a fight sequence with, um, I don't know if it was the end fight sequence, but it involved you know Batman with Batgirl and versus Deathstroke and that they end up losing. So, yeah, there, there is, uh, yeah, Batgirl was in it. There was some cool stuff. Yeah, I wish Joe can say this stuff. I can't. <laughs> you I'm, can't. Just a lowly, I'm just a it's... lowly artist on the production, so I can't really say too much about it other than the fact that I yeah. thought it was fantastic. I thought it was, yeah, really Joe, good. Joe talked about it a bit today. Yeah. Although, like, I think some of the stuff that Joe was saying might have been in the later scripts than I worked on because yeah. the stuff that I worked on, um, there's a little bit of difference. Um, but like I said, uh, that early version, I for me was was really good, and I mm -hmm. I hope they get something of it because it was it was it was a fun. Thing. I don't know if Zach read that one, but I thought it was cool. I thought that was really good. Yeah, I think all of us in the fan community, it's a no brainer. <laughs> we all want to see it. That and again, I would have to say this too is that like I really wish, um, uh, Rick was able to do his flash film because mm -hmm. Rick when he was flash film with it was really I know good. I thought it was really good, and Rick was an amazing he was an amazing director to work with. And um, I was really looking forward to that. I loved his film Dope, which I just yeah. thought was oh, fantastic. It was fantastic, yeah. If Dope is great. Yeah, it's, it's so yeah. good. And Kiersey the stuff wanted, in it. Yeah, yeah. The stuff he wanted to do in uh, in, in his Flash film was was, oof, was really good. Was, mm -hmm. And that was the one that I was working on. I actually worked a lot on it because that, that was the that was the one that I had first started with um, before I got wrangled into work with. Ben on his, and then mm. then ultimately working on Justice League with Zach, and then doing reshoots. But I so mm. I I was on a good like six months, um on on Rick stuff before they eventually mm. like, plug on it, which was a shame uh, because I was ready to go back go back to London because I was gonna go back to London for another like couple months, and I was like cool, you know, get my <laughs> fish and chips and, and hit the pubs there. But uh, but yeah, I was I was a little bummed about that. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that sometimes you know you'll you'll, you'll that'll see the light of day. I'm hoping. No, I love. I didn't get to work on David Ayer's Suicide Squad, so mm -hmm. I know they're trying to make a campaign of trying to, you know, see what that version is. I'd love to see it. I didn't work I, on it, so unfortunately, I, I can't to comment yeah. too much on it. Other than, you know, David follows me on Twitter, but I've never really talked to him. But I'd love to. If I ever did talk to him, I was like, why didn't you hire me to work on Suicide Squad? Like, <laughs> you know, I did the answer. You could have hired me. Uh, Fans, but get a, the campaign going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but I'd love again. I'm one of the thing where I'd love to see what what he did because I love I love David's films. Like I, I'm a big yeah. fan of, of stuff, and I'd love to see what me too his yeah. version looked like. You know, before the theatrical release. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, that, that 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 could be something that we next we see, uh, or who knows? Maybe they'll give David another another DC film to do. I would love yeah. to see. Yeah. Or Zach, I'd like to see Zach do another one. We'll see. We'll see if yep. Zach wants to do another one. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, is, is there anything else you want to talk about, Jay? Otherwise, uh, we can let you get back to adding some more credits to your IMDb page because you've spent almost two hours here. <laughs> oh, is it two hours? Oh, my God. Time goes yeah. by. So I hope I wasn't rambling too far. And no, we love it. No, absolutely. Yeah. We'd let you go another I can, hour. I can if you talk want. for hours. I mean, usually when I, when I teach my class, it's all lecture, yeah. but I end up going off on tangents and talking about like experience <laughs> of on these films. And everybody's just listening to me talk, and I'm like, oh wait, I gotta get back to the lecture. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you know, so you know, we've got we got a couple animated films coming out. I'm also um, I'm also show running, uh, co show running, uh, as well as my studio doing um, Arc, um, the video game. We're yeah. doing an Arc Evolve. We're doing an animated series with that. Um, with an amazing cast like Russell Crowe and Jeffrey Wright and Elliot Page, and it, it's it's pretty nuts. So. <laughs> I don't know when that's coming out, but it's going to come out soon. There's a trailer you can check out on YouTube. Just look up Arc Animated Series. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll see that there. Um, we did we, my studio did the, that trailer, um, but it looks fantastic, and we're working with like some amazing actors around the world. We were fortunate because of the pandemic; all the actors were working from home or just at home because 
there was no live, you know, there were the, the, nobody was shooting. So whenever we reached out to them, they're like, I'm just sitting at home. Sure. Right. <laughs> so we were able to get like an amazing cast that I, I don't, we did Malcolm McDowell. I mean, mm -hmm. I, it's amazing. The kind of people that we were able to get um, Gerard Butler's in it as well. And Michelle Yeoh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could go on, and on, but that's another thing you guys should keep an eye out um, on Twitter. I usually try to post up stuff that I'm going to promote. Uh, I usually don't do podcasts or interviews, but I'm going to start kind of doing it in the next, you know, in the next probably coming up year. Cause I got a bunch of stuff I got to promote. Yeah. Uh, I might have some stuff at Comic-Con maybe uh, that okay. I'll be promoting. So if you guys want to check that out, I think uh, check it out, help support it. And um, I think that's about it. And then hopefully there'll be a justice con three. And then I, <laughs> I can, maybe I'll, maybe in the justice con three, I'll show some of my storyboards uh, that I did for, um, for the Zack Snyder's um, justice league, as well oh. as um, there's some stuff on BVS that never made it that I think you guys would be, We'd love to see like so i did a lot of the superman saving the world so the one where he's got the the rocket and yeah. pulling the um, ship and i did all that stuff but we uh, but zach uh, one time just said hey just come up with a bunch of superman saving people so i yeah. i have a ton of other stuff that i had done that they didn't do for the film but it was all kind of iconic different things of superman saving people um from the comics that i was thought oh that'd be kind of cool to do mm. that you know uh maybe i'll show that next time who who uh who can let you release those? Are you able to release them? <laughs> no, but, <laughs> I can release it, but I mean, at this point, remember, at this point, like, um, they never really used it, so I, I guess it it kind of falls into I can kind of show it. I mean, I just can't sell it and make money off of it, but I yeah. can. There's no reason why I can't say, look at this, you know, and <laughs> you know, I mean, I can always say it's fan art. I can say it's just me drawing Superman. <laughs> That's <or> right. <laughs> Uh, but uh but yeah we, i did a bunch of stuff like for that on uh, awesome. batman v superman and i did a bunch of um i did the the batmobile sequence where batman uh, chasing after the the um in that batmobile the reveal the batmobile at the um at the uh portuguese or whatever that that oh boat. yeah yeah White so i did that whole yeah. sequence where batman i thought that was that, for me that was fun <laughs> Except uh, I think Zach told me, Jay, we can't do some of this stuff because the stuntmen will die if they do this. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, can't the CG stuntmen do it? And they're like, no. And then I had one time I had Batman, he like jumped and his cape flared out and he glided. Because I mean, I do that all the time. Yeah. And Zach, like, yeah, the cape doesn't do that. I'm like, it doesn't. He's like, yeah, we don't do it. I'm like, I was like, we should really do that because it's a Batman thing. But Zach was yeah. the one. I was like, okay, that's fine. Uh, I mean, I, one of the things I think I mentioned this last time. Uh, this is maybe one of the last things I'll mention. You'll if you watch any of the DC animated stuff, whether it's a TV show or or, mm -hmm. or, um, or one of the or one of the films. Um, if you ever see Batman throwing batarangs that explode, it's usually me. <laughs> Yeah, I really did do that. I'm, I'm like, if I'm Batman, I'm throwing batarangs. I'm gonna make oh. him, I'm gonna explode. Like, if I'm gonna be putting like my utility belt, and it's like, okay, here's a batarang that knocks people out, and here's one that explodes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stock up on the ones that explode. So <laughs> if you ever watch that, that's what I tried to do. So I was doing, I tried to do that with BVS, and I don't think I was able to get any out there. Maybe they do it with um Doomsday fight when he fights Doomsday, but I didn't work on the Doomsday fight. Mm. But uh, I'm always trying to do having Batman like blow people up with, <laughs> with his grenade batarangs. That's that's one of my signature things. And then like with Superman, what did I do with Superman? I like to do heat vision and punch at the same time, but I know it's kind of mm -hmm. hard because you're punching your eyes are kind yeah. of doing this. <laughs> right. In animation I could just draw Superman's head straight and I just have him doing this <laughs> and it works. Yeah. Like, yeah. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a blast and i hope you guys you guys do um another justice league con uh, justice con please invite me back i think you kind of set us up for that because they will not let it go and for those of you like be sure to donate to you know the suicide yeah. awareness because that's a that's a great cause and you know um be sure to you know uh, kind of uh, kind of uh help everybody out you know uh we're, we live in a crazy time now and and we're, we're very fortunate to get the snyder cut and again this is all right. for the fans like you guys did this like i didn't do it all i did was come in and and just <laughs> troll the trolls you online helped. because <laughs> you're, a little, you know, you're a troll slayer come on <laughs> no it, it's one of those things where like I, i'm in a unique position because i work on both marvel and the dc universe yeah. so people can't just say like oh you're just a dc guy i'm like i work on everything mm -hmm. but um you know and plus i have a very unique you know kind of position because i did work on all this stuff so so when people say that something didn't exist or you know ben affleck's script was terrible or this and this like i'm more than happy to jump in and say okay number mm -hmm. one you're just making this up right like don't mm -hmm. talk out of your butt because clearly 
you don't know, right? Yeah. And and, oh, and I'm that's where you're at your best. When yes. you're and, 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 the, and the thing is, is that like, I'm, I'm just trying to correct them because I don't want people, it's, it's, the thing is that there's a lot of misinformation out there, right? I, there I, was, just, yeah. I was looking on Twitter earlier and there's uh, still some stuff that's out there that people are, are just kind of guessing on, on, you know, what, what, what happened for both this film and the other mm -hmm. films. And what's, and I'm just like, you guys don't know. And a lot of times it's a lot more complicated than what you think it is. And it's just a matter of just, mm -hmm. I mean, as fans, it's just like, just support things you like. Right. And you right. know, if, if, for example, like, let's say you don't like a particular show that comes out, that's okay. Just don't watch it. You don't have to like, you know, you know, uh, you don't have to like tell the fans that they suck because they like it. Just don't watch it. It's fine. But at the same time, like the thing is, is that if you support you know, these kind of DC films oh, or D awesome. Marvel, whatever, it just means that you're going to get more of the same, right? You'll, I mean, you'll get more of these kind of storylines, right? If, 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 if comic book films and, and TV series weren't successful, then they'd stop making them, right? And mm -hmm. and right now they're the hottest thing, and it's because I yeah. I, I I love it myself because I grew up with the stuff, and I never thought I'd see the day where there's so many superhero stuff out there in animation as well as live action, and and like I mentioned earlier with you know with the Pattinson and Ben Affleck Batman's, mm -hmm. there could be different versions of Batman out there right now, right? Mm -hmm. And there's no reason. All the only thing that the studios respond to is just money right they respond to you know people getting subscriptions people like saying what they want and uh, for the longest time there was a, a vocal minority of critics who were mm -hmm. who were you know, trashing zach's films and saying that there's no color and it's this this and this and i'm just like okay, okay it may not be your cup of tea but that's cool but there are a lot of people who really like this stuff i'm one of them i mean i like my i like my superhero films different ways right i mean and i like them all there's there's no there's no right or wrong. And, and I think we just need to support that and support us, uh, you know, as a fandom, you know, just support that, understand that, like, you know, people do like different directors and different versions and takes of these characters and not one of them is right or wrong. They're all different. Right. And, and the more that these, these films kind of do well, the more that they'll eventually get to the, to the storyline that you like or the director that you want. I mean, you might be like, I'd love to see James Cameron do a DC film. Maybe someday James will, maybe not, most likely not, but maybe he will. Right. right. Uh, but you, but the, the fact is, is that as long as, you know, us as the fans keep supporting this and, mm -hmm. and letting this, you know, and letting our money speak for, you know, whether we subscribe or buy the products or whatnot, kind of, you know, tell the studios, this is what we want. You right. know, don't listen to these critics who are, you know, mm -hmm. are basically trashing it for the minutest things, right? And like the whole Superman doesn't smile. Like, really? Like, one of the people like, grinning the whole time, I'm going to fight the world. And it's like, how is that? Again, it's yeah. one of those things where I think, I think now the fans realize that with, with what, with the release of, of the Snyder Cut and the studios kind of really uh, taking a look at, you know mm -hmm. what's happening online and, and the kind of fervor building around you know the fandom i think things are going to change right things are going to mm -hmm. and they already are seeing things change right um yeah. hopefully it's for the better i mean mm -hmm. i'm just a cog in the wheel when people tell me like jay why don't you do this i'm like i, I can't pitch that stuff i don't own these characters right. <laughs> i know i have to wait until they call me and say hey jay do you want to work on this cool i mean but i, I think like i said like right now is, it's a fun time to be a fan but at the same time mm -hmm. we have to be really cognizant of the kind of like uh, responsibility we have to mm -hmm. to each other like not to yeah. flame everybody right i mean because like yeah. i said marvel and dc it's all good right be heard but be is, heard like, respectfully right yeah we live in a time that like it's it's yeah. it's 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 really great to be a comic book fan right and you don't yeah. have to be a, yeah. to be a comic book fan right people are always batman shirts superman shirts Captain America shirts like uh, before in the old days you had to be yeah to hide that stuff right now it's like it's mainstream. everybody's got it yeah yeah and now it's a fun thing right? I mean that's why I got all this geek stuff behind me and I get to work on all these cool projects um, that's awesome. and and if you want to do what I'm doing all it really takes is just you know it's a lot of hard work just do it's it it's a lot of like and just do it right I mean there's a lot of, there's a lot of people out there who think oh you know I'm uh, I'm not talented enough or it's all luck it is luck but at the same time if you really put the time in and, and work on your craft whether it's drawing or directing or acting or whatever you want to do you can do anything i mean you can yeah. accomplish it because i mean look at me i mean i was i, I was gonna tell i was gonna tell this story I, I hope this isn't going too long i'll get to tell the story early on so when <laughs> no, I was a kid, take your time when I, a, when I was a kid i 
I used to go to Comics Unlimited, which was in mm-hmm. um, Hawaiian Gardens. Like, I grew up in Orange County. Mm-hmm. I used to bike there. It was like a 30-minute bike ride. And it was in, in, in an area of town that was really not that great. But as a kid, I didn't care. <laughs> I, I'd bike there. So I'd bike there every week. And I remember one time, and this changed my life, uh, John Romero Sr. was mm-hmm. there. And he was looking at at, at 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 artwork from different artists. Like he'd say, Hey, you want John Romero Sr. to look at your stuff? And I went there, I got his signature, I loved his stuff, and I brought my drawings. And he he was the first professional to be like, This is really good. And mm-hmm. you know, and, and he gave me, I mean, here's the thing. It probably was crap, but the words he told me were basically kind of uh inspired me to think i could do this i could Mm -hmm. go into art and and you know and and he was a really nice man and uh, again i I don't know whether or not he was just being nice but the words he told me always stuck with me and and that led me that's why i like i was just thinking about it today that that was the first comic book creator or or professional who actually really critiqued looked at my artwork and said this was good and you know you you might have a you know you might have a a future doing this and I, I remember it inspired me i just went back home and i just kept drawing and drawing and drawing and i was young i, I might have been like maybe like 14 or something um mm. and uh but that's what i mean is that like you know for those people who want to end up doing what i'm doing uh it, it's don't don't be afraid to you know to get criticism and you're, most of the time mm. people are going to tell you that that you're not good like mm. my whole family told me that i sucked right you're never gonna art you're never gonna art uh and I said, I'll show you, right? I was like, Naruto. I was like, I'll show you. I'll work hard. Uh, <laughs> and, and again, I, I, again I, I look at my career today and I, and I look at my filmography of working on all of these things that I loved. I haven't worked on Star Wars yet, so hopefully I go to work on Star Wars. But I've worked on a lot of things that I loved as a kid growing up, you know, from video game franchises to, you know, of course, this comic book stuff. And um, it's just a testament that, you know, you don't, don't lose hope and just, mm-hmm. and just, you know, st- you know, stay the course and, you know, despite what people say to you and try to like, you know, hate on you, just, you know, work on yourself and, and then the, it'll eventually find you, right? Like the, your work will, will speak for itself and, and people will, will hire you and, and you'll be working on projects that you were just a dream project before, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it's funny. I saw the, uh, I'm, I'm, I know I'm rambling. I saw the, <laughs> the poster you guys did, right? And, of today and like there's all these people on there i was like holy shit. and then there's me like on there <laughs> i was i was uh, i was i was i think i tweeted it and i remember tweeting it looking at the poster going okay of all the people here who does not belong <laughs> and i was like yeah i shouldn't, <laughs> be, mean. I shouldn't be in that i shouldn't be in that thing and and uh it's again it was one of those things where it's it's, it's i'm very again I'm, I'm very humbled by the fact that i, I could be part of the panels uh, some mm-hmm. be, yeah again and be the last one right i mean yeah because i know i ramble a lot more than zach does but <laughs> uh but uh, you know to me it it really meant a lot for to me to be invited and to have this spot where i can just ramble as long as i of want to of course <laughs> so, thank you again and and it still freaks me out that i'm in that i'm in that poster with all those other guys because i i no, feel no, like you... i just photoshopped myself myself in there and be like guys look <laughs> i'm on this thing with zach snyder and right you know <laughs> <laughs> you will always have a home at Justice Con. Um, before you. we let you close it out and let you go, um, Liz, shout out to Liz Wonder. She actually reminded me of a question I wanted to tell Tim to ask you, but I'll ask you myself. Okay. Um, so it was, it was spotted in ZSJL, some members of the Mutant Gang. And was oh, that yeah. something that you did? No, I wish I had done it, but it is it is the Mutant Gang when you look at it, because yeah. it is. The Dark Knight Returns thing. Uh, mm-hmm. I think, um, I mean, Zach always has a love for Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns, so it, I, I thought I thought it was a fun Easter egg for him to throw that mm-hmm. in there. But no, yeah. I, I didn't. I wish I had. Although I'm glad that Zach did it, because if I if I had pitched it, I would have felt like I was a little bit like tooting my own horn, like hey, Zach, yeah, you do I can understand but, that. But no, I didn't. Unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't do that one. I wish. I say did. that had to have been a surprise for you, right? Oh yeah, it was. I mean, I remember. I think it had leaked on the internet or something. It was on one of the early trailers, and I was like, "Hey, that's a bat tank." And then I, and then like, you and then like, the if you look, there's one of the guys, and he's got that visor, and I'm like, "Oh, that is so cool." You know, I mean, yeah. Okay, here's, uh, one, here's, a, here's a fun story. I remember we were doing. Um, so this was on um, Them and the Superman. Um, there, there's a scene where uh, KG Beast has Lois, and he's got the flamethrower, 
and then Batman comes to the wall and he, yeah. and he grabs the gun and shoots him. Also known uh, as the best scene in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I remember Zach called me into his office and he's like, "Hey Jay," I'm like, "What, Zach?" He's like, uh, "How did you do the that Batman coming through the wall thing in, in your movie?" I was like, <laughs> "You mean in, in Dark Knight Returns?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." You know, like when he grabs him and he shoots him. And I'm like, "You do know Zach that they, they that's the same thing that's in RoboCop too. They did it in RoboCop as well." And, and so I kind of like, we, we talked through it and he's like, okay, what are we going to do with this one? And I'm like, well, we could try this. And then, and then, so again, you see that, but it was just really fun that he called me and asking me, cause there was that homage to, to that in, in BVS and just us talking. He's like, how did you do it? Okay. Now how can we do something different? Or how do we, you know, so, and I was just like, dude, I was just ripping off Robocop. Robocop. It's, it's Robocop <laughs> oh my God. That's absolutely amazing. I love that. So, so there's always fun. I mean, working with Zach, there's always fun times where like, just randomly he'll ask me stuff like that. You know, I remember I gave him a copy of Justice League War um, when we were doing Batman v Superman. And I had, again, I had just finished, uh, I, I it hadn't come out yet and I had a director cut and I gave it to him. <laughs> and he watched it over the weekend. And I remember on Monday, I was like, so what do you think? And he's like, he gave it to me. He's like, he's like, man, that's crazy. And that's all he said. He just said it was just crazy. And I was just like, is that good or bad? I don't, I don't <laughs> What does that mean? It. Yeah. <laughs> and next thing you know, in ZS he's close to yeah. referencing it yeah. like almost yeah. there well the whole, the whole cyber story. story and everything yeah, yeah. I mean, everything it, uh -huh. it was, i mean i can't take credit for it but I, it was just funny that like like i said that early on in batman v superman i had showed him that i mean again that's my adaptation of jim lee's and jeff john's you know justice mm -hmm. league run yeah. um but i just love him saying like yeah that's this is crazy <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's oh. exactly the same. I'm just like, okay, I, I'll take that. I, I, I hope, I hope you liked it. <laughs> well, you know what's I, crazy? Well, dark sides in that. We did this crazy dark side fight. So I think, I, I think, uh, if we ever did do a Justice League two, yeah, uh, you know, love to get a crack at doing an insane dark side fight because I mean that was one oh. of the things on Justice League War that I wanted to do is I wanted to really play up dark side as this kind of like. Like he's just this badass, and there's this moment. If you mm -hmm. notice, if you watch the film, he never touches the ground. Like he floats around. Like he's mm -hmm. he's it's so beneath him to walk on to walk. Right, <laughs> he just floats. But but when Superman shows up and and like grabs his fist and pushes him to the ground, he goes yeah. down on one knee, and that's the first time he ever touches the ground. And then after that, like they basically end up beating him. But they have to beat him by combining all their powers. And it's funny. I was watching a YouTube clip of it, and the comments are like. All of these guys, like Wonder Woman throws her sword, Green Lantern does his blast, Superman does heat vision, and uh, I think Aquaman, does he like throw his spear? I don't know. But uh, anyways, and then and then there's shit, and then everyone's commenting, and Batman throws a batarang, right? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> what is an exploding batarang? It's, it's a grenade one, you know? And uh, I just, I, that's the one thing, I was looking at the comments, and I'm just laughing at people commenting, it's like, you know, they're like, Batman should really shouldn't be there. What is he going to do? And I'm like, mm, oh, he's Batman, right? But it's... That, that was the one thing that <laughs> to hell I with wanted, you he's bat why <laughs> i wanted to do a thing where they all do something to push dark side through the the boom too right because uh, mm -hmm. i mean that's my one thing whenever i do group group battles i want to make it i always try to make it where every person has a job and if mm -hmm. one of them fails then everything fails so i, I mm -hmm. try to choreograph so that way there's a part i i, I kind of really did that um batman bad blood if you watch that film um, mm -hmm. There's Damien fighting. There's Batwoman fighting. Mm -hmm. Batman's fighting Nightwing, and each of them. And, and I think uh, shoot, uh, who's the who's the Batman that that's in Bat armor? Batwing. Jesus, they named mm -hmm. Batwing. They named a character Batwing after the <laughs> Batwing vehicle, which always throws yeah. me off. But anyways, Batwing is also doing something, and they all have to do something. And I remember um, that was one of those the scripts where I ended up redoing the ending because I wanted to make sure that each one did their own thing and if they failed everything failed and so they mm -hmm. had to there were stakes you knew that they all had to accomplish different things um but that's kind of like what you have to do like when you're a director you have to kind of you know feel out what the script needs and then and then try to give it what it needs both in the action or the drama or you know mm -hmm. like you might be like i need i need things to slow down here and let's let's do a moment where you know um you know the uh uh, the the audience kind of catch a breath before you go into the next you know bit of action. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a lot of that. Anyways, I'm rambling. Sorry guys. I know we're supposed to wrap this up like ten minutes ago, but <laughs> oh, I was just, awesome. I was just thinking like, oh yeah, I want to talk about this. This is some fun stuff. Your your panel's open ended reason. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I did I'm see the longest panel. It'll be like 24 hours long. I'll just be talking. <laughs> I'll be regaling you with stories of. I'll be talking about Earth's mightiest heroes, you know, that I had done or some early. Batman. You'd ha you'd have an audience. <laughs> you'd definitely have an audience. <laughs> yes. I, cool. I did see. I did see. By the way, that we hit eleven thousand hours for AFSP. Yes. Yay. That's awesome. We did. Awesome. That's awesome. So thank you all you guys that are able to support to that. I mean, this is, um, I mean, we all know why this is so important, but I mean, you know, this, this, this money that you guys are contributing just matters and it's, it's so important. It's going to save lives. So thank you guys for it. Um, yes, thank do you, you girls. Yeah, go ahead. No, uh, I was just saying thank you, everybody. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, so girls, do you, do you want to, uh, close out the day then and then talk about tomorrow? Yeah, sure. We okay, can do that. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. If Jay feels like he's covered all the stories he wanted to cover, if you have anything else, I, don't worry. I can keep going. I got I got tons of stories, but <laughs> you you've already set the record for the longest Justice Com panel. You're at two two hours okay. minutes. Ten minutes. I, I think yeah. that'll probably be my, that'll be the, the last one. You guys won't invite me last year, uh, next year because you'll no. be like, talking no, but talking. we'll just keep you we'll, right. we'll keep you open ended again. Cause this is yeah. great. This is fantastic. Everybody in the chat is actually obsessed with hearing your stories. Oh, they love you. Yeah. To feel self already that he, they're loving you so much. Yep. I, appreciate, I appreciate the fans um, support and not only for Zach's film, but even for my stuff. And, and whenever, you know, I'm online and I get the support on there, it always feels really good. Even when I get criticism, it's still funny. Cause I always laugh it off, but I, mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, I do this for you guys. You know, I, I'm a fan too. I'm, I'm like a, a fan who just happened to fall into this job and, and be lucky enough to work with people like Zach and yeah. all these other you know, creatives uh, that I've been fortunate to work with over the years. And, um, you know, I still, I still like can't believe where I'm at. And again, it, it, I, it is luck, but at the same time, I do work very, very hard. Like I you obviously work very hard. Like I sleep like four hours a night. That's that's as much as I sleep because I would do like two sixty nine. Gosh, like that's crazy. worse than me. I do five hours a night. I thought I was bad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But you know what? I think it's because as I get older, I feel like that my days are getting numbered. So I want to be awake longer. <laughs> Like, Maybe that's why. Okay, that's when, I, when, I, when I was younger, I was like, I'm going to sleep 14 hours today. I don't care. Or I'll, I'll spend a whole day just playing like, you know, uh, Final Fantasy V or something and just yeah. waste a month of my life. But now I'm like, oh man, my days are numbered. I need to, <laughs> I need to like get as much done as I can before, <laughs> before it's over. Oh, so man. bleak. That's but I've had those same thoughts today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. When you get older, like I'm 45 this year. So, um, yeah, I started when I was 19. So <laughs> Some uh, people in the comments are f suddenly facing reality now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome so, yeah. to the Jay, Jay Oliva panel <laughs> where the, the doom settles in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I bring it up because, uh, again, I, I'm sorry for going on a tangent. Uh, Go on. So Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick was one of my was one of my all time favorite directors, and and there is a, a documentary on him that was really resonates with me because he had mentioned that he spends so much time in pre production and development of a story, like he spends like four or five years or even more before he actually mm -hmm. films it. And the one thing he regrets, you know, is that he only made a handful of films, right? Mm -hmm. Like he wished he was more prolific because he had so many mm -hmm. stories and, and so many things that he wanted to, you know, do in his films. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, he only he only did a handful, right? And and that's kind of where uh, I'm at. Where like I've done a lot. Like my MDB is it's pretty it's pretty packed. <laughs> Even then, I'm just like, I wish I could work on everything. <laughs> I want to work on it because there's so much cool stuff out there, and yeah. it's just not enough hours in the day, you know. And 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 that's the one thing. Like, I I love I love working on, you know, I want to work on on a romance. I want to do romantic comedy. I want to do musicals. <laughs> Musical. <I> wanna, <laughs> there's, yeah. you know, the sky's the limit when it comes to stuff like that. But there's, you know, there's only a finite number of projects that you know I could actually be a part of. I mean, that's why I like. <laughs> That's why whenever Zach like does something, I'm always like, "Can I be on that? I'd love to be on that." Like, I hope he calls me. Right? I think. I well, that's last why time. you and Zach are such good guys. Want want to do everything, and you're juggling multiple items. But yeah. thank you so much for coming, Jay. This has been absolutely amazing having you, thank you. and get and letting you have your like open floor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is this is gonna set up the uh, one man show.
of of next year where I basically do 24 hours of stand up. Day yeah, four. You get a you get a whole day. Day four, Jamie. You get a whole day, and we won't give you a host. You can just talk to yourself. No, <laughs> no that would be cruel. <laughs> no, we'll just, so, we'll just open with questions. You know. Yeah. But thanks again. Thank you again, guys, for inviting me. Uh, no, thank you just, so much. Thank you again for being here, as always. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, uh, so guys, so tomorrow, day three, we're going to close out the convention. Uh, just right off real quick, we have a spotlight on American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. Then we have the women behind the scenes of Army of the Dead. Spotlight on women from Army of the Dead. Uh, spotlight on Deborah Snyder. And then we have a spotlight on Dave Batista. And then we end the convention with a spotlight on Army of the Dead with Zack Snyder. So make sure you hosted, guys hosted by Tim and Scott. So yeah, just a yes. quick Thanks, update. Tim. Debbie's not gonna be alone on her panel. Wes Scholar is gonna join oh, her. Oh, Wes, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Wes, that'll that be was a last one. minute addition, but yeah. <laughs> That's great. So, so yeah, keep you can sure the can. panels will be available offline so you guys can watch them whenever you want. So keep watching them. Every view is a donation to AFSP. Keep donating through YouTube and the merch is linked down below. Absolutely. Well, great. Okay. Well, thanks again everyone. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, guys. Oh, for All tomorrow right. for West Collar, you could ask you could ask him questions about Dawn of the Dead because he's been work, working with Zach, I think since Dawn of the Dead and before that. So yeah, he's got some stories. So we should oh, ask I'm him sure. stuff. We got. I'm, we got I'm writing that down. That one, but I think she's she's asleep because it's four a.m. over here. So <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Probably. So I think that closes off day two of Justice Con 2021.